Seal community, we're here today with a recast and Seal approved broadcast of the Demacian finals between Anarchy Purple and Sentinels. I am Cage the Caged Reaper here with Gruer, and we're getting ready for a barn burner. Yeah, it should be a really fun one. Um, I, think we're getting, I think we're getting ready to jump right into picks and bans. But, you know, in the regular season, both of these teams actually, if I'm correct, they went 10-2, and two, only dropping games to each other where they went 1-1 one one in both the series they played. So this should be an exciting one, two very evenly matched teams at the top of their division. Uh, I don't know. I was looking, but I couldn't find for sure. I know Fuzel talked about it in his uh, recap. Do we know which one of them had side selection and took first place? I'm not certain myself. All right, well. Um, I know that in the past, in their first round of games against each other, one side won every game, and I don't recall which one it was. I'd have to double check. But I believe that it was blue side -sided favored for all of the games. Um, and based on that, and it looks like a birdie is telling me secrets that Anarchy wound up with the higher seed, that follows with Anarchy Purple taking blue side in the first game. Um, yeah, and, you know, with, with getting blue side, they obviously get the power of having the first pick, and they went straight for a set, which is a very strong top laner. Uh, I know that these top laners share a lot of the same pool, which might be part of the reason why the blue side pick comes in so strong for them. Uh, in the top lane, we've got Shadow Claws playing the set. We've got Respected Bigfoot playing Zack in the jungle. Creek on Oriana in the mid lane. Nico Nya on Ezreal with the Yumi. Uh, and this is obviously pre-nerf Yumi, so Germproof is riding high on that power cap. Definitely, certainly. Uh, on the other side of the map, we've got Aleorol on his tanks, Lightning 13Z playing Warwick, and I believe that, that is a strong comfort pick for him. Scattercat on the Syndra in the mid lane, the Prophet, their carry playing Kogma, and Morgana coming out of Alston Res Tip, who, if I'm not mistaken, was a late addition to this team. Yeah, I mean, I really like both teams' drafts here. I mean, you know, looking at Anarchy Purple, it's pretty clear what they're wanting to do. You have the Zack, you have the Set, the de ball delivery system, the Engage, the team fight Wombo Combo, and then you have Ezreal, who really doesn't need that much peel. You throw the Yumi on top of him, and he should be able to just take over this game. But then on the other side, I mean, the Morgana is a great way to stop some of that Engage. Kog'Maw, if he can get going, can shred the Zack, can shred the Set. Scion can get in the face of those carries, and you know Warwick brings a little bit of that that mid game, early game scrapping, which I think they can use to hopefully get ahead and try to snowball the Syndra. And if the Syndra gets ahead, then you're in a good spot. Uh, I definitely think that AP has a stronger draft from a they want to team fight. We know this about them. That's who they are as a team. But personally, I like Sentinels' draft better. I think that they have more versatility in it, and they have a lot more ability to pick and take fights in side lanes and play a little bit of catch, as well as still having a really strong front to back fight. And if this game goes late game, I think Kogma Syndra wins that scaling, but not by much. Yeah, I think really what Sentinels will have to do is use the power of the Warwick and the power of the Oriana, both of which, or excuse me, power of the Syndra, both of which should have that early game to really force the 2v2s around the rivers, around mid lane. Because if your mid jungle gets ahead, then the side lanes just follow usually. Uh, I would agree with that. Uh, I think that that's enough breaking this one down. Let's hop into game and get this one on the road. Masaki! All right, and we're loaded onto the rift here. Looks like a early caution ping coming out on the side of Anarchy Purple. Uh, pretty standard five-point vision setup coming out, although 
Yeah, Mor uh, Morgan is currently still in the base. I um, wonder if they're going to pause or wait on her to arrive, but normally if I had a Morgana, I might actually try to look for an invade or some kind of a punish, but looks like they're playing standard, playing safe. You know, you're in the finals. You, you're you confident you can win if you just play it your way. You don't want to potentially give any kind of a lead. Well, especially not when uh, you have the late game scaling in your favor. And I, I think that with a Kog'Maw, you just, you always want to slow that game down just a little bit. Definitely. Morgana gets early vision in the river. Not sure if they'll spot anyone out, but potentially could catch out the Zac, give a little bit of an idea if he, for some reason, wants to path up. More just to defend the invade, though, I'm sure. That, that would be my only, and it looks like there's actually a mirrored ward out. Coming both down from Oriana. Yeah, both junglers just looking, looks like they're going to probably take a pretty standard path. Both bot lanes leash the first buff. As to be expected, doesn't look like we're going to get any kind of weird shenanigans yet. Oh, uh, well... I think that Zach, generally speaking, wants to do a little bit more of a full clear. He has a decent early gank, but if he runs into Warwick, the Warwick's going to win that trade. Uh, Warwick looks like he's doing that blue gromp, possibly over to a buff cam. And the junglers look like they're about on the same clock if they try to get off the top ganks. Yeah, certainly. We could see some action brew. Both top laners already chunked to about half. Not afraid to scrap. That's exciting. I do think if we're going to see any action, it probably will come from top or mid. Ezreal Yumi can generally play pretty safe, but also don't have that much room to engage onto the Morgana either. Yeah, I think the only way we see anything big happen bot lane is if one of those Morgana binding lands really big. But those two ADCs need a little time to scale up. Neither one of them is doing much early. And it looks like we've got Warwick walking into this top side, but he was spotted out by a set ward. No pings coming out though. Looks like Scion engaged. He found the Zac. Some nice deep vision from Warwick there. Oriana is moving over, but I think Warwick should be able to get out no issue. Uh, thinks about making the play, but ultimately decides to back off and make a play on this crab. He's walked through that vision. That top board yeah. is getting a lot of a lot of good. Ooh, respected Bigfoot hiding in the bush. Warwick doesn't know he's there. Ian. Oriana is moving trade. over. Oriana with the first move. Some trading down, but Syndra's here. No EQ combo, and everybody's going to reset. Looks like Warwick will be able to get that crab, though, which would be a nice win for him, but Zach is sticking around. I think here Zach just needs to cut his losses and go get that bottom skull crab when he has a chance. Uh, I would agree with you. I think that it's not a bad decision to do what he's doing here. If he takes the wolves, he resets his jungle. But Warwick has the blood on him and knows Hunting. that he's there. That bloodthirst comes through, shows him up. The attack speed boost is coming out. He used it. Oh, had to flash out because he used the E into the wolves pit. Oriana responding, but just not quite soon enough to save that flash. And that's going to be a flash off of a good invade from Warwick early. Yeah, I like the aggression, you know, he, he has the blood hunt, he has the scent, isn't afraid, knows his damage, knows that Zach really can't stop him right now. And it looks like he's moving over to get that double scuttle crab, which is a great punish. Uh, really, really good early pathing from Lightning 13Z here. Punishing the Zach who has a weaker early game, taking the double crab, and getting his flash out of the deal as well. Yeah, and I like the ward he dropped as well, he'll spot Zach out. Zach's probably going to move to the Raptors and then... He might be able to get vision on him and see where he goes from there. It's also protecting his mid laner. Which, especially because of Zach's weird engage angles, that's a really, really good ward. Oh, you, definitely. When you're playing against Zach, you always have to ward kind of different spots that you no normally wouldn't want to. Uh, sweeper coming out from the Warwick spots out the ward in the back of the Dragon Pit. Respected Bigfoot responds back with the Scryer's Bloom. So Vision is marked out on both sides. They have a general idea where they're seen and where they're not. Yep. Lanes are looking pretty even overall, but Syndra does have a 12 CS lead currently, which is good to see for her. I really think Syndra can kind of bully this matchup early. Oh, nice EQ landing there. I think that if we see anything happening soon, top lane is where it's most likely to happen. The Scion is completely oom, and Set being one of those champions who doesn't 
depend on mana is in a really good spot to try to bully here. Definitely. I think one of the things we didn't mention, but Zach could potentially struggle this game. You know, the Morgana Black Shield's obviously a counter, but Syndra E can stuff the Zach engage very easily if she's on point with the timing. Oh, looks like Zach's down at the bottom looking for something, but clears a ward and decides that it's not worth the risk. Yep. With both bot lanes being fairly out of mana resources, but pings that he's on his oh. way mid, where Scattercat is oom. Level yeah, six no, is out no on mana both doesn't mid. allow the doesn't allow the cancel. He charges. He misses, but the Q lands. The pullback after the flash, but that flash will get Scattercat to safety. That's a good flash, you have to respect that. If he didn't flash that, the shockwave could have came through, and then at that point, flashing then might not be enough. Uh, completely agree. The TP advantage in favor of uh, Anarchy Purple right now, because Alien Roll had to teleport back to lane after backing because of he, his illness. Uh, but he's winning those trades now with that item advantage. Definitely. I would like to see some kind of aggression pretty early around the dragon. I, I think Warwick can kind of keep pushing his lead. I know there's vision on it right now, but Ezreal is backing. And if his bot lane can get pushed, they might be able to go for a dragon play. There he goes, Lightning 13Z walking up, reading your mind, clearing out that vision. Is he going to stay for the dragon is the real question. His bot lane's rotating up. They know that they have vision control, sweeper out, yeah. and they're going to start this one up. It's a great call. I mean, you recognize that the Ezreal and the Yumi just backed, and they're not going to be, be able to answer. Orianna just backed, and Zach's not going to come there by himself. So it's really a free dragon take. It's a good call by them. And then with the map resetting, everybody heads back to their lanes. A little bit of vision set down in that tri-bush by Sentinels. And Warwick headed back to farm his Gromp and start his jungle clear. In the mid lane, Scattercat pushed up a little bit far again. But Zach's low enough that he's considering the gank, but I don't know if it's going to be worth it. I don't think he wants to risk it when he's that low. One Syndra Q, E, W is probably enough to kill without the ultimate. At least pop the passive. Nice ward in the pixel bush by Scattercat to prevent the Zack gank angles, and they clear out the pink in the other river. As Zack walks into the jungle to drop a pink and pop the blast cone, that's some really good vision control, but Warwick just hit six, and we'll see what he's going to do with that. Yeah, I always like being able to get one of those wards. That, that ward can often go unnoticed for quite a while if no one's checking for it. So more trading in the top lane with the Haymaker going down, chunking Scion down to two, a third of his health again, as Set just continues to bully this lane. But Warwick's up top, walks through the Tribrush ward, and that's going to put an end to that. But his Sweeper comes out, he finds the ward, and he's going to head down to take what looks like a free crab. Yeah, I think Set's doing a great job understanding when he is vulnerable this game. You know, he had that early ward that spotted out Warwick multiple times. Another ward right there to protect himself. And, you know, if he's, if he's stuck in the 1v1, that's what he wants. I, I would agree. Some really, really excellent play from Shadow Claws to keep himself safe. But the Warwick here possibly caught out, spotted by Creek, And he's going to get out. Gets the crab, just takes a little bit of damage. But on Warwick, you don't mind, especially going back to take this red buff. The healing off of that is going to be huge. A chunk of damage on him. Scattercat wandered down bot lane, but it looks like he was spotted out and nothing happening down there either. Yeah, it's a good ward kind of up in the river, a little bit further up than usual if it's just in the bush. Spots him out kind of early. Gives them plenty of time to react. Walking across that vision ward, pinging him out. Yeah, that ward's already paying dividends. One thing, I, I like the Orianna's choice of Keystone this game to go for the phase rush. You know, she has options, but as, as a mid laner myself, I'm personally a big fan of the phase rush. I think it's great, especially in this kind of scenario where she'll, she'll be in situations where she's wanting to try to kite out the Warwick and kite out the Scion. It does provide a lot of extra options. Uh, we got some big trading going on in the bot lane with the uh, Morgana, Alston, and taking a bit of poke here while Germproof and Nikonya are maintaining some real heavy pressure, but it doesn't seem to be affecting the farm of the lane at all with almost a dead tie between the two ADCs. Yeah, it's a very close game so far. Slight CS lead in top lane, but you know that's kind of expected. Set is a bully, especially into those tanks. Oh, that the Ezreal ultimate almost killed Alston Restip very low. He'll have to back. Oh, and the Yumi roll comes out. They're locking down the Kog'Maw. The exhaust is out. 
Morgana stays around though and lands a binding, and the Warwick ulti comes oh. in. That's going to chunk out Nikonya, the fear, but he flashes away. Flash forward from Lightning 13Z, and the first blood goes over to Warwick with a wonderful gank. Ult and flash committed. Looks like Yumi might just barely get out of this one though. That was a great gank by the Warwick, perfect timing, and an excellent bind by the Morgana. You know, she hung around like, pretty much 1 HP, knowing just the oh, range she could stay at. By Krieg. Oh. Goes in on Scattercat and manages to take him out with the ultimate trade. Oh, wow. And That's just a great before solo Scattercat's kill. flash came up to be able to dodge it. That's a really yeah. good timing of flash there by Creek. Definitely, and that's a great solo kill, punishing the flash from earlier. Zack and Warwick chase each other off. Alice and Restip staking around here, getting a little bit risky. Both the Prophet and Restip are here. Black Shield comes out. The Q lands. Oh, what a cue by respected Bigfoot to catch the Morgana and the Kog'Maw. But they're going to trade back at the TP from Scattercat in the back line. Scatter the Weak comes in and manages to pop the Zack passive. Warwick's back down, like team 13Z running in, and Scattercat takes the kill onto respected Bigfoot. Really, really good use of the TP by Scattercat to get himself back in this game after getting solo killed in the mid lane. Definitely, you know, he never didn't get discouraged by the solo kill. Looks for a great opportunity. I love taking teleport on mid laners. You know, Oriana doesn't have TP to match. She went for the cleanse, which isn't a bad call necessarily, but the TP gives the advantage there. Uh, and then some solid dragon vision by Sentinels to set themselves up for the next big play that's coming down the pipe. A good reset off of bot lane, and they're going to be in position to contest this if respected Bigfoot and Anarchy Purple try to force this fight. Yep, dragon in, dragon spawning right now. You know, I think. With the Warwick, the power of the Warwick right now, you just want to keep cycling these dragons. Uh, Warwick's two levels up. Lightning 13Z got two levels on respected Bigfoot, Zach. Scattercat coming down to clear that ward. I think that that's the right call because it allows your Warwick to sit in the bush and set up for oh, Krieg, just like this. And there's a big catch that cleanse coming in handy, but the ult from Set manages to take Lightning 13Z off. The Yumi comes through. Oh! The ulti from Scattercat comes out though, and they do manage to get the Oriana, but not before losing Warwick. Zach ease into the back line, manages to land on top of Scattercat and Lightning Restip, but another Scatter of the Week comes down. Big Scatter of the Week, Nico Nya picking up the kill onto Restip despite the Haymaker from Shadow Claws to put him down. The Prophet falls also. Two kills onto Nico Nya, but to get that, they lose Shadow Claws. Top later down. Another Scatter of the Week lands to disengage from Scattercat, and. That winds up being a two for two. Yeah, I mean, that, oh, everyone actually, was involved there. I guess that was a three for, oh, but walking back in, respected Bigfoot finds alien roll backing, and he's gonna take that vision, despite the fact that they walked into him for it. I, I forgot that Warwick went down early, so that's actually yeah. a really, really good fight for Anarchy Purple trying to bring this one back. Yeah, you know, Seti didn't even have teleport down there. He walked all the way down, recognizing that a fight was going to occur, and him getting that ultimate on Warwick really saved them there. It looked like a great fight when the Warwick catches out the Orianna, but, you know, Set being there just turned it. But unfortunately, the extended fight leaves Sentinels in a better position to hop right back on this dragon and rush it down. So they may have lost the initial fight, but Sion walking right back down to that fight Leaves them in position. Great disengage from Scattercat with the EQ. And then Morgana's Dark Binding secures their exit. Shadowclaw's still walking forward looking for something, but not going to find what he was looking for. And another really heads up play by Sentinels to secure themselves a dragon after they found everybody on the enemy team backing. Yeah, you know, if, if you win a fight, it's great, but if you don't turn it into anything, and I don't necessarily think they had the opportunity there, there were low health bars on our, our, all sides, but it's a great job by Sentinels to recognize, hey, we can get right back on the map, we can keep pressuring this, they can't stop us again, they don't have a settle this time. And after that, it looks like, however, Anarchy Purple with a real heads up play, trying to trade to the top side of the map, but a little bit late. Oh, the Scryer Flume misses, but he's looking for that crab, and the crab... Is like he'll run into them. Give them away. Yeah. But with Zach there, they might try to take this fight anyways. They have first move. Sion walking down Sion's from the top line. Zach jumps onto Warwick. Syndra's now there. This could be really, really dangerous for Anarchy Purple if they try to force this. Oh, and Shelly resets, so it's not going to matter anyways. Yeah, I think if I'm Anarchy Purple here, you might just want to back up and just let it slow down for a minute and catch your waves. 
Really good deep ward by uh, Sentinels there, catching the Oriana and the Zac both resetting. Yeah. I like the idea of trying to like sneak the Rift Herald. It's definitely a good idea, and it almost went uncaught. But it's I think always... they also did a good job backing up as well. It's always dangerous to try to sneak a Rift Herald or a Dragon when you're on the same side as a Scuttlecraft that's up. And really, that's what caught them there. It wasn't that Sentinels had vision or knew they were there. It was the fact that they were trying to take it while the Scuttle Crab was there. Yeah, it's a good point. Definitely. So Warwick is sweeping around, considering it himself, maybe. But they missed that ward in the bush heading up to top lane. And with the Scryer's Bloom from Oriana, k -Rec in the mid lane, Spotting out all that vision, they have an idea what's up. Oh, Scion ulti into the set on the top lane. Sets up the knockup. Ultimate from Warwick comes down. Not quite enough to burst him out though. Oh. Shadow Claws ulting them back under the turret. They manage to pick up the kill and they do it with a clean dive executed by Alien Roll and Lightning 13Z going under the turret to take out Set, who's one of the hardest champions to burst under a turret. Well, there was some action bot lane at the same time. Ezreal dropped, but so did Morgana. And that Action trade, everywhere. that trade definitely goes in favor of the profit because anytime you can trade your support for your ADC to get ahead, especially a late scaling ADC like the Kogma, that's big. Although it looks like the kills actually yep. went over onto Morgana. Yeah, unfortunately he didn't get the kills, but him being able to stick around did let him shove the wave in. But you know that was a great dive top. I mean the alien rolls Scion ultimate was perfect into a perfectly chained Warwick ultimate. It was a nice job by Shadow Claws to ult him into the turret to almost be able to outplay but the Scion did a great job you know staying just in turret range to tank enough turret shots to make sure Warwick wasn't in any danger of getting traded and with that vision control from earlier lightning 13z walks up and manages to steal out that rift herald and that's going to be another objective secured on the side of sentinels and with that rift herald they'll probably be looking to crack the first turret and really just open the map and keep snowballing the game your Syndra is three and one right now very, very strong. The Warwick's 2 and 1, very strong. You just really want to keep pushing that lead. Uh, looks like we might have a little bit of skirmishing going on over Vision in the Bot River. They don't see Scattercat, though, who's in behind Nikonya, and the Scatter of the Week lands, but Ezreal manages to jump away. First move goes over, but the burst comes out. A lot of damage. Scattercat, that's another kill onto that Syndra. Absolutely massive at 4 and 1. And K-Rex here to try to make a play, gets a good little half health burst off, but Austin Res tips there, Warwick's there, flash from Creek, and the phase rush proc to actually save Creek's life. Yeah, that was a great roam down by Scattercat. Ezreal and Yumi just didn't see it coming in time. Great Scatter the Week caught him even though he had the arcane shift. Uh, and then K-Rex coming down to try to make a play on the Orianna, does a good job himself, but just not quite enough. Lightning 13Z drops the Rift Herald here for Profit to try to take this should turret. should get the turret mid first. Yeah. Oh, great rotation by K-Rek. Goes down into the river, draws a bunch of attention, and then manages to walk back up and take the turret, punishing Scattercat for constantly roaming and picking those kills up. Yeah, you know, he's doing a good job. He knows he doesn't necessarily have the strength right now to match the power that the or or the Syndra's putting out on the map, but recognizing, hey, I can grab this turret, and not getting and turret when you have third dragon's up, but... K Rack oh, with wow. another amazing play to shut down that Syndra, knowing that the ultimate is down. Ultimate just comes back up for Syndra after dying. That hurts. Forget everything I just said. K Rack knows exactly the amount of power he has. That was a great shockwave. Looked like Scattercat just didn't flash quite in time. And that was a 1,000 or 700 gold shutdown, I believe. I mean, that was a great punish by him. And. Anarchy Purple here trying to force this dragon with the advantage that they have on the map. TP comes in from Shadow Claws, chasing off the Scion that is Oom. Uh, yep. Scion walked down here to try to help support this, but he can't really contribute a whole lot. Alcyn Res tips, Dark Shield's out, but lands the Dark Binding. Smite comes out from Zack to secure. They might lose that, settles the Morgano, runs out the backside, manages to... Oh, gets dropped, however, by the Syndra. Now it looks like Syndra ulted the set, exhaust onto the Warwick. Zach They're gonna Pat's heal up. Going down. Yep, respect to yeah. Bigfoot falls to a Warwick bite, and they managed to pick up the dragon, they managed to pick up some shutdowns, but still, Anarchy Purple just can't manage to turn this corner against Sentinels, who push their gold advantage even higher.
yeah, you know, it's a it was a it was a great play by K-Rek to catch out Scattercat, but just like the previous time where he did solo kill him, Scattercat used his TP to get right to a fight and to keep the t tide going in their favor. So it wasn't even as if Syndra wasn't there. Really, really unfortunate for Anarchy Purple. They're doing everything they can to try to get back in this game, but it seems like for every step forward, they take another one back. The big thing for them, though, is they deny that soul point threat, so they have a little bit more flexibility with how to advance in this game. Definitely. Getting the dragon there cannot be understated. That's really big. You do not want them to get soul that quickly. Uh, and a really good smite out of Zack there to contest that in a, a mixed battlefield. Definitely. And what we are talking about, obviously the Kog'Maw scaling is unmatched, but there is quite a bit of scaling on the other side. I mean, a late game Ezreal with a late game Yumi, that's nothing to ignore either. I mean, if they can get to late game, they should feel confident too. And Set and Orianna both are no slouches when it comes to scaling. The only problem for the Orianna right now is the fact that Syndra is far enough ahead that the damage coming out of the Syndra far and away eclipses the damage coming out of the Orianna. But Syndra's a one-target mage. Definitely. Stabbing I mean, the leak works really well at multiple stuns, but that ultimate hits one person. Yeah, you know, Syndra, with her current power level, will kind of have the choice if she wants to just delete this Orianna or potentially just delete the Ezreal. But you're not wrong. I mean, as it goes later, the Orianna, she's been hitting good shockwaves, and if she can consistently keep doing that, they'll have the potential to win. I mean, you know, the Zac and the Orianna and the set can just win you a team fight instantly if you hit the correct abilities. Oh, a dive top lane, though. Oh, or well, they were trying to make a play down bot lane, sending four to get the bot lane of Sentinels. A dive up top comes out, or not even a dive, a play up top comes out, Lightning 13Z and Alien Rail knocking down the set again, because Shadow Claws walked just a little too far forward trying to catch that wave, and it's going to force Anarchy Purple to back off of their attempt to make a play bot lane. Really good backup by Prophet and Allison Rose Tip as they saw the ward clearing coming down. As k -Rec walks top with the Yumi to clear some of the deep vision that Lightning 13Z was trying to set up. And it looks like we're going to have people heading back to farming, but it feels like Sentinels is trying to set up that Baron sooner or later. Yeah. And you know, for Pro or for Shadow Claws there, the combination of a Scion ult and a Warwick ult, and then a Scion charged up Q, I mean, you're just not really getting the move at that point. A little too far up, and that was a good punish by Sentinel to catch him out. Oh! The Prophet almost steals the red buff away from Zack with his ulti after Morgana lands the Dark Binding. That would have been really unfortunate for respected Bigfoot, but he walks away with his red buff intact. Oh, that would have been massive. I mean, he's, he's already three levels down to the Warwick currently. Losing that buff would have not felt good. And I know we've been talking about a lot of advantages on the side of Sentinels, but k -Rec is actually a level up on Scattercat right now due to being in the mid lane just that little bit more and most of his kills being solo kills. And there was that interaction you were talking about with Scattercat denying the E from respected Bigfoot. As Yumi shows up, Germproof with the ulti out, they manage to lock down the Orianna, knock her up, and the ult comes out, but k -Rec is just too tanky to be knocked down, courtesy of that Orianna tankiness. Yumi has her completed grail, so the heals are starting to get strong. Oh, right wave. after that, a really good shockwave on the Morgana, but the Scion ulti comes down from behind, and with that, they get a two for one. Respected Bigfoot goes in to try to save k -Rec, but k -Rec and Respected Bigfoot are both gonna fall to the combination of Alien Roll and Lightning 13Z. He is landing some great Scion ultimates this game. Oh, Mikunyo with the ult sniping Alcen Reship out of the back line. Oh wow, that was a great, great snipe. Now he'll be dead. Dragon spawning in 20 seconds. Morgano's coming up in 25, so she'll be late to the fight. And this is one of those few times that we're gonna see if Anarchy Purple can force their advantage. They have the members on the map. K-Rex just coming up. It's gonna matter if they can stall this out long enough to get their Orianna to the fight. Scattercat's gonna show up first. Zach's running, but you know, Kog'Maw will shred this right now if they just start hitting it. Nico and Yao standing on vision. Looks like they're gonna just either try to steal or make the call to give it up. Zach wards, he's gonna try to go over the wall here. Nope. I, I think, think it's a good a play. Too fast. I think it's a good play by Anarchy Purple to give that one up. Yeah, uh, you're, not, you're not in position. They would have had to position earlier and all of their damage is on K-Rec right now. If K-Rec's not there, 
they can't take that, especially with Scattercat already there. Definitely, and you know, Sentinels has a pretty nice lead right now, but if the game is not necessarily out of reach for Anarchy Purple, but if your jungler goes in there, even if he gets the steal, if he goes down, that'd probably be a quick Baron for Sentinels, and I don't know if you can come back once you give him the Baron. Completely agree. Really good play, and this is the benefit of them taking that dragon earlier and denying Soul Point. They didn't have to force that dragon play, they had the ability to let it go. Right, that, that's a great point. Getting the dragon earlier gave them the opportunity to be able to play oh, safe when they needed to. Oh, walks it. Oh, okay, Rek. Oof. Play him with one. fire, walking into the face of a Warwick there to get a little bit of vision with the Yumi. Yeah. Sometimes when you have that Yumi on you, you feel kind of unstoppable, but if the Warwick ult comes down, I don't know if you'd be surviving. Especially not with Morgana and Scion there to layer their CC. And for as much as we've been talking about our two mid laners in this game, you really can't understate the sheer golden damage difference between the jungle and the top lane. With I, Lightning 13Z has just taken this game over. Objective oh. control, damage control, lockdown. Oh, and the play comes in with Zach jumping in. Ulti comes out from Yumi. Scattercat gets locked down and bursted out by k -Rec once again as they sneak around behind and make a play from the darkness that they've set up around the Baron pit. Anarchy Purple with a really good pick to try to set themselves up to take Baron. Flash out from Morgana. But, Morgana. but respected Bigfoot does the good thing. Tank Jungler steps in front of his mid laner. Now, granted, k -Rec responded really well and flash out of the way, but you got to respect the tank mentality of taking the bullet for your team there. Certainly, and as you were saying before all that action, yeah, Lightning has... Almost a 3,000 gold lead over the Zac right now. I mean, he's Kayrek playing an excellent up, game. With Alfin res tip, Alfin falls back. Q does not connect from the Morgana. Yep. But yeah, Lightning 13Z is really, really pushing the difference in this game right now. Sitting almost 800 gold up on the Zac. No, never mind. 800 gold almost, in pocket, almost 3,000 yeah, 3, gold. 3,000 gold, yep. Despite all the difficulties he's been having in the top lane, Shadowclaw is managing to stay quite even with the Scion. Not a whole lot of a difference there. k -Rex barely edging out the Syndra. Bot lane's even. All of the gold difference in this game, almost the entire 3,000 gold difference in the pocket of that Warwick. Yep. I'm a big fan of the Zac pick personally, but I mean, I think Lightning is showing a great job of how much that pick can get punished. I would agree. I, I think Zach benefits from being able to gank and make a lot of plays early, but if he runs into an early jungler that just out damages him and can outplay him early, he doesn't come online until 35 minutes. Yeah. And you know, Zach will always be useful. He's been getting good initiations onto the Syndra, even though Scattercat has been landing some nice Scatter of the Weeks to keep himself safe, but they're doing a good job getting onto it. Much of that is from respected Bigfoot's continuous engages. And the Yumi ultimate has come through really, really clutch. Germproof has been doing really well with those Yumi ultis mm -hmm. to make sure that even when the Zac E misses or the set engage misses just a little bit, the Yumi ulti locks down the target and they manage to pick up the kill anyways. Yeah, because depending on how far the Cinder scatter actually knocks you back, the Yumi ult's still in range to sometimes root you. Uh, we just got a reset, which is huge off of the side of Sentinels. That was 2,000 gold sitting in Warwick's pocket that he now has paid. Scion ulti coming out. They're running it down the mid lane. Respected Bigfoot hit by the Morgana Snare, then hit by the Scion ulti. Knocked up by the Scion Q. Ulti pop, teleport out to save Zach's life. But with the Scion Q charge, he's going to drop anyway. Shadow Claws comes in. The ulti from Yumi over the top. Oh, big Scion. settle. Set goes in. Oh, k Rec just misses his uh. ult. And that's going to be a big, big trade in favor of Sentinels. Looks like they might be able to turn it around with the set ult. But k -Rec and the Orianna ult don't quite connect. And yeah. that one's going to go in favor of Sentinels. Yeah, that feels bad. I've been there. I, I think k -Rec tried to put the shield onto set so that the ult would come out there. But he died right when Orianna pressed the ultimate, causing the ball to bounce back to her. Orianna ball mechanics. Next level. Real hard sometimes. Sometimes it's that unlucky sombrero ultimate sometimes. <laughs> They need to fight this dragon, though. You, you can't kill them. Their jungler's not there. They need to try to push him off. You don't want them to get soul. Nico Nya around the corner trying to get out the poke. Lightning 13Z walks up. He's so tanky. He's so big. They're just going to force this. 
Yep. Manages to chop it down. On the other side, K-Rec walks up with the Yumi trying to make a play, but gonna get caught, can't do much. Ezreal on the other side, Nico Nyan just trying to poke him down, but they're gonna give over the soul. With K-Rec down, that should be the Baron also. It looks like Sentinels is walking up there right now. Shadowclaw's trying to flank, but they know he's there. This would be a hard contest without the Orianna. Orianna is the most of their gold, most of their damage. Ezreal's starting to catch up, but just the two item spikes not enough to match a two item Kogma right now. Alien Rolls is doing such a good job zoning. Real hard to walk past that sign with his busiest. The Yumi oh, comes out, in. And Ted jumps in. They manage to grab the Prophet. And Zach ulti onto the Prophet, sets on the Prophet, flashes. And that Kogma is huge, but he still falls. They managed to stall this out, but they lose their jungler and their top laner for the ADC. The Yumi drops also because anytime you kill somebody with a Yumi, you get a two for one. It's delicious. Yeah, I think you could credit almost every member on Sentinels right now for playing a great game, but Alien Roll has been hitting almost. I don't I don't know if I've seen him miss an ultimate. He, he hit Ezreal there and just zoned Ezreal out of the fight himself. Ezreal had to just E over the wall. Just can't deal with the Scion right now. K Rec walking up, trying to make something happen, manages to chunk out Alston Rested, but gets hit by the Scatter of the Weak, cleanses the not the stun, however, manages to run away from the burst. Scattercat doesn't have ult up, flashes away from the Q. Ezreal's fighting on the other side. Scattercat manages to flash forward, secure the kill onto K Rec. Ezreal ulti flies through the pit. Looks like they're healing up and letting Baron reset. Yep, they Ezreal killed the Morgana with his ultimate. Got them to get off of it with the Orianna denying the Syndra from access to the Baron. It was a good kill by Scattercat to, to make sure that he got the Orianna. But they didn't get the Baron, and that has to be, at this point, it has to be looked at as a, a slight win for Anarchy Purples. If they get the Baron, I don't know if there's much of an opportunity to come back. I, I think that's a huge win for Anarchy Purple. They lose their mid laner and manage to stop what should have been a for sure Baron. But Sentinel's just playing the long game, playing it safe. They know that they have the Kog'Maw. The Kog'Maw's going to scale up, and he wasn't there at that Baron, so their Baron take is quite slow. Uh, especially once Scattercat leaves to go secure that kill on the k -Rack. Definitely. I mean, I predict we'll probably just give it a minute, and we'll see more of the same, see some fighting around this Dragon. I mean, around the Baron. Uh, I don't see much else coming out from either team at the moment. Resetting vision, k -Rex going bot to catch a wave, but without TP, k -Rex putting his team in a really, really dangerous spot. Sentinels should just start up the Baron. Prophet walks up, clears the ward. Sentinels look like they're starting to rotate over towards it. Back to that TP advantage you were talking about earlier. Yep, k -Rex is walking up now, but... If Sentinels wants to pull the trigger, he'd be a little late. It, lo it looks like they're kind of just continuing to play it safe, play it slow, take their time, so K-Rec will make it in time. Benefits of the vision control and the scuttle crab take by respected Bigfoot right after, the, right after he came back from spawn. It's just enough to discourage them from wanting to fight for that Baron on top of vision. Really? Both teams posturing around this Baron here. They recognize it's the only neutral objective on the map. Big burst coming out from K-Rec and the ulti, but the Black Shield and the Zhonya save Alton Resident's life. Warwick ulti comes forward, Orianna's down. Yumi and the Ezreal are in the back line trying to make something happen. A great Q by Lightning 13Z to follow respected Bigfoot and chase him out the back. The rest of, the, of Sentinels is chasing Shadow Claws up and they're going to try to reset and get back onto this Baron to reset it now that K-Rec has fallen once again. The big threat from Anarchy Purple's down. And is this going to be Baron for Sentinels? I think they could if they wanted to try, but, you know, I mean, I think they're just a little hesitant with the Zac being up. Oh, Scout got breaking! Nico Nyahek gets hit by the Scout of the Week. Yumi says, later, buddy! as Germproof jumps over to respect his Bigfoot to take a ride on the Zack train out of trouble. That's a great flank. They just said, we don't need Baron. If your mid laner's dead, your Ezreal's dead, you can't stop us from taking this turret. And with the the Kogma and the Syndra, the Siege is pretty solid on the side of Sentinels. It's not a terrible decision, but I, I do think that if they took the Baron there, the game's already over. Yeah, I mean, I, th I think you could argue for the Baron, but... Oh, another great Scatter of the Week. Syndra is just pumping out damage right now. 
Uh, I've oh, we're gonna bind. Oh. oh, but the cleanse comes out. K Rec really, as much as the teleport from Scattercat has been helping him really push the tempo of this game and help his team stay ahead, it's a big part of the reason why he's 7 4 and 9 right now. I think that the cleanse from Oriana has not been a bad decision. She has saved her own life a multitude of times, cleansing the Morgana Q and the QE from Scattercat. Yeah, no, definitely. I, I think the cleanse was an intelligent decision. But at this point, the whole Baron dance has lasted so long, you have Elder Drake spawning in 20 seconds, and now there's multiple options on the map. Uh, I think if I'm Sentinels here, the Elder Drake has to be your priority. Uh, it makes it just absolutely impossible for Anarchy Purple to get back into this game. A single QE from Syndra should proc the Elder Dragon death button on half of the enemy team. Yeah. And it yeah. looks like Anarchy Purple knows that, and they're showing up to this dragon first. They have position. Shadow Clubs runs forward, manages to catch Allison Res Tip. The Oriana ulti comes out, chunks the Warwick, but he's massive. Set ulti comes out from Shadow Claws, bursting Allison Res Tip for the last of his life. Ezreal and Kogma trade lives as Shadow Claws continues to go forward. Yumi on him, K Rex there. But Finger comes from behind, and a QE manages to secure the dead Oriana. And an ulti manages to get another kill out. Scattercat's absolutely massive. Shadow Claws and Germproof, the only ones up on the side of Anarchy Purple. And they're gonna try to back up, but Shadow Claws walks back forward, lands one more E. Warwick continues to walk forward with the Scion pushing them off. The Yumi healing is massive, however, and combined with Set's passive, they're just gonna be able to run around this, heal up, and run right back into this pit. Yeah. It looks they like Shadow Claws can't let him get the dragon. Doing everything he can to stall this out. Nikonya just came back up, but Alcin Restip's already on his way. They're trying to spar it out. Knockup comes out from the Scion. They're just going to keep trading this one back and forth, trying to stall, trying to chunk, but there's just not enough damage. Set ulti comes forward. Oh, big ult. Puts himself on top of the dragon, but it's not enough to get the Warwick low. Lightning 13Z is just too big with that Titanic and the Spirit Visage. It bought time though, Ezreal's arrived, Zach's on his way. Nikonya's here, but they can't really oh, get into the mid shot of to walk forward for vision. Zach just a second oh. too late on the E, a great smite from Lightning 13, he secures it. The Orion ultimate, huge however, manages to blow up the Warwick. But they go forward and that Elder Dragon That's buff the Elder is just Drag. too much. They yeah. managed to take down two, but the damage coming through gives a triple kill over to the Prophet. Kogma is absolutely terrifying, and when you give him something like Elder Dragon, where all he has to do is tickle you a little bit and you explode, it's not going to end well for you. Alien Roll walking forward, tanking for the minion wave to make sure that they get the damage or the armor reduction on this turret so they can push it. And this might be the end of this game. Yeah, I think no one's up for 15. I think they can go for the end here. Even if they do get up, there's no way you're going to stop the Elder buff. Despite Nico Nya's attempts, and Valiant efforts. Yumi's not gonna be up in time, the Kogma's online, the Syndra's online, and that's gonna end game one in favor of Sentinels. Wow, that, that was a great game. I'm excited to see what we have next. You know, that, that Oriana Shockwave at the end was massive. I mean, it was just huge. And you know, if they had the Elder Dragon, that's probably a wipe right there. But yeah, you, this, the buff is too strong. It's almost impossible to win a team fight when the other team has the Elder Dragon. Uh, yeah, that that Elder Dragon secure was a really, really good play. Anarchy Purple knew it was coming. They did everything they could to fight that, but they were just a little bit too far behind the damage curve at that point. They were a little bit too far behind the gold curve. And Warwick's just next to impossible to kill once he gets that Ocean Dragon buff. That Ocean Soul keeping the Scion and the Warwick alive in such a way that they were basically unable to take damage. Oh, definitely. I Alien Roll was just unstoppable that game just absolutely huge warwick just had an excellent game if i had to give an mvp that game i i think it has to go to warwick you know everyone on the side of sentinels played great but i think it's the warwick's just really just demolition of the zach early game in the mid game that just allowed everyone else on the team to be able to just play so free and start start getting leads uh i know the prophet is the primary carry for sentinels and they tend to focus their entire play style around enabling him and getting him ahead but 
Lightning 13Z did a phenomenal job flipping the script this game and setting up the top lane. And, you know, it's really hard for me to pick. Scattercat did great. Alien Roll had an unimaginably good game on Scion. But Lightning 13Z on that Warwick, just setting absolutely everything up, controlled the early game in such an amazing way. I don't think I saw him miss a Warwick ulti. He's definitely got to be my MVP also. Yeah, it was a great one. And, you know, for game two, I, I would like, I honestly, I think Creek should stick with the Orianna potentially, unless you wanted to maybe steal away the Syndra, because his Orianna, I thought, was really good. He had two solo kills, I believe. He was hitting some nice shockwaves at the end. I think had that game been a little bit closer, those shockwaves really could have turned and swung it the other direction. Uh, I agree with you. Uh, I want to give k Rec my ace, but I think that despite getting camped, despite getting beat up, it has to go to Shadow Claws for me. Uh, he handled the pressure he was getting exceptionally well with Grace. Most of his deaths were dives by two very large individuals. I, I can't fault him for those. And especially mid and late game, he did everything he could to stall and keep his team in the game. Oh, no, yes, definitely. The set was having a good game. He hit multiple just gigantic ultimates at the end. Him as well. I, I think the game was a little bit closer when it got to the end. If, if they hadn't lost just his hard early game, I think those settles and the around the ults could have a big impact next time. Uh, I agree. So what do you want to see from Anarchy Purple going into the next game that would be a good adjustment to help them prevent a rerun of the game we just watched? Yeah, I mean, I, I think you have to either ban the Warwick or ex just recognize that and pick a stronger jungler yourself. Like, there's nothing wrong with playing Zach. Zach's a great jungler. He works well with their team composition. But either you have to protect your jungler more or you have to get him a better matchup. Uh, I agree completely. I think that Zach is a great jungler, but I think they need something that's a little bit more early game focus. I know that they want a team fight and Zach is fantastic for that, but I think they put their jungler on the back foot and Lightning 13Z on that Warwick kept him on the back foot that entire game. So I'd like to see them put their jungler on something a little bit more available. Um, I think that as well as Nikunya played, he needs something that is a little bit more early game. He needs to be able to make an impact earlier because the Ezreal is a great champion, but he doesn't come online until mm -hmm. later in the game. Yeah, that's what I was about to add. You know, if, if, if you recognize that the Prophet is Sentinel's usual primary win condition, pick a jungler and pick a bot lane that can shut that win condition down. Pick something aggressive. Uh, I completely agree. And I, I, I agree with you. Uh, the Orianna was great, but if you can take that Syndra away from Scattercat, and play it yourself or ban it. I think that that's also going to be big time in your favor. Um, but we'll see what they do heading into the next game. Great.
And welcome back to game two between Anarchy Purple and Sentinels. We're going to have our pro draft going live in just a second. As we look at the changes that the two teams have made, they've swapped sides. Sentinels has opted into taking blue side away from Anarchy Purple, despite the fact that they just won on red side the last game. I think that blue side was the advantage side for most of their matchups. Yeah, certainly. If they're not afraid of like picking certain things early, I don't think you necessarily have to worry about having the last side red side counter pick. You know, it looks like they opt for the first pick orange, so they definitely feel like that's a powerful pick that they just want to grab. After seeing how well he performed on the Scion last game, I'm excited to see his Orn play. It's a similar, you know, it's another tank that can just really get in the face, really land big ultimates for these team fights. Uh, one of the big surprises to me is the Warwick's not banned out, but they didn't pick the Warwick. Lightning 13Z opting into the reworked Volley Bear. Yeah, definitely. I, yeah, I, I'm a little bit surprised as well, but you know, I mean, I do think Volley Bear is pretty strong right now. You know, he also potentially didn't want to blind pick the Warwick here this time, knowing that Anarchy Purple would get to pick into that. Maybe they were worried that if he picked it again, something better would come into it, which I do think there are bad matches for Warwick, certainly. Another big thing, though, which you mentioned, Anarchy Purple Creek did choose to steal away the Syndra. First picking the Orn gave them the opportunity to get the Syndra. And, you know, Scattercat went for a Malzahar answer, which I don't think is a bad matchup necessarily. I, I don't think it's a bad pick into the Syndra, but I'm excited to see what Creek does with the powerful Syndra pick. Uh, I agree. I don't know that I would pick the Malzahar into the Syndra. I, I feel like it's... You can survive one QE, but if you get hit any time before that, I feel like you're at a massive range disadvantage. I, I can understand the logic of time trying to play it, but really, really different team comps coming out of both sides this game. Uh, and seemingly for not a whole lot of reason because the bands don't look like they've changed that much. Other than the Zac band and the Kog'Maw band, none of the champions band were played in the previous game. Yeah, and I mean, I, I, I don't, I like the first pick Orn, but you also, I mean, the Alawi is a pick into the Orn. When you first pick something like the Orn, you are risking getting a counter pick or getting something that can bully it. I think the Alawi is a good choice there. You know, the Soraka is a fine pick in this game, I think. The Prophet gets another hyper carry, though. I'm excited to see how he performs on the Kai'Sa after recognizing they took away the Kog'Maw. Let's see if he can do as well on the Kai'Sa. You know, Brand's a powerful pick. Can really bully the Soraka out. And you know, the Aphelios last pick, I, I don't I don't hate it this game, you know. I, I think Aphelios can do well when when you have things that are trying to run into him. If he has the Soraka to keep him healthy, potentially has the Trundle to peel him. If the Trundle ults the Orn, the Aphelios could really start shredding him or the Volley Bear. But I, I think it's gonna be an interesting game. I, I think it's gonna come down to ex execution. Uh, it looks to me like both teams spend a lot of time preparing drafts for different sides of the map. And I think that's part of what we're seeing here is both teams said, all right, well, if we're on red side, we're playing a completely different way. Mm -hmm. And I think that Anarchy Purple did a really, really good job of identifying a counter for the top lane early pick and taking a power pick out of the mid lane. And then later on in the draft, they pick a Soraka to be obnoxious and counter the brand in a lot of ways and a trundle to steal stats from Orn and or Volley Bear. And then they pair it with Aphelios, who, if played well, has a pretty good ability to cease the enemies from a distance, mm -hmm. which will just stack on top of the Soraka and the Syndra. I think Anarchy Purple has a phenomenal draft. Yep, I agree. And I, mean, I think that maybe the biggest single difference between the games is the fact that respected Bigfoot on the trundle has a chance to just win the early game this time and not get bullied around. And I'm excited to see how he performs. He's probably ready to bounce back from that game one. Uh, I agree completely. I think that Anarchy Purple showing a different approach. This doesn't look like their traditional team fight comp that they would normally pick for. Whereas Sentinel's draft looks a little bit disconnected to me. Uh, I feel like it's, they want a team fight, but they also don't want to give up their ability to get picks. And so it's kind of left them in a middle ground where they're going to have to decide how to play the game. And I think that they're going to have to get ahead early to be able to win. Yeah, I'd agree with your assessment. I'm, I'm excited to see how it goes. Let's load into the rift and watch this one play out. Masaki! Oh, 
Alrighty, and as we load onto the rift, we've got pings coming out from both sides. Looks like they're calling for a five point on the side of Sentinels. And Anarchy Purple is matching them going into a five point. I think that that's probably a good decision from the two team comps. Yeah, definitely. We didn't see an invade last game when there was arguably pretty decent invade champions here outside of maybe a trundle pillar. You don't have too much that you're looking to start an invade off with. So I think it's fine just to take the take the five point. Don't let anyone get any deep vision in your jungle and just let, let the game play out. Yeah, th this is a, a mid game comp to a late game comp from both teams. Uh, nobody with early CC. Uh, I, I would expect this to be a fairly quiet first six to ten minutes, but given the fact that this is the Demacian finals, we might see some spiciness go on. Yeah, certainly. I'm always ready and hoping for some action. I do I think, think different than last game, we probably will see some action bot lane this time. You know, Morgana, Yumi. Now we have Brand. Soraka. I mean, these these guys can scrap. You know the brand's going to be looking to get a lot of damage out. That's a really good point. Um, and the other really big interaction I want to see... Oh! Cheeky. Cheeky positioning. They're here. They managed to get the pick off early, but it's going to be an ignite, a bunch of damage onto the Soraka. Nikonyas trading back. And despite a greedy path from the bot lane of Anarchy Purple... Because of Soraka's obnoxious healing, it looks like they might have walked away from that fight in the better position, having only lost their heal for an Ignite. Yeah, An Anarchy Purple certainly came out on top there in the bot lane, but it has to be noted the war or the excuse me the volley bear after taking the blue buff tried to go steal the red buff away, but. That was a good job by the Syndra to go up there and protect his jungler's buff. And Trundle is going to get the other red buff. So that's that's a big loss for Lightning. Really, really big pressure swing. The jungler's off to a completely flipped start as respect to Bigfoot hits level 3 off of the red buff in the side of Lightning 13Z's jungle. And he's forced to fall back onto his Gromp. And God, this is, that's massive. This is going to be a, a big, big benefit to respect to Bigfoot, who had a rough start to the last game, already off to a significantly better start this time around. Scattercat is going to recognize what happened. Walks over and sees it, but he doesn't have his shield up. And, oh, he managed to get it up just in time to prevent the knockup, but he gets run down by the trundle here, I think. Flash from both, and wow. first blood over onto respect to Bigfoot. It's funny, I was just about to talk about that interaction in the pregame before we ran out of time. And in the top lane, we have Alawi taking out Orn as Shadow Claws manages to pick up a solo kill for himself. Lightning 13Z trying to respond on the Bully Bear, but I think the healing might be too much. Shadow Claws flashes out, is running away, slaps back more healing because Alawi's a champion. Yeah. Gets himself out. Anarchy Purple said they, they got knocked down the first game, but they came to play, it looks like. It's a great job by respected Bigfoot. Get the first blood, get the counter jungle. Big engage off of Alien Roll, E forward into the pillar, knocks up Shadow Claws, but the healing coming out of the Alawi, just continuing to slap him with those tentacles and heal up more and more, and all of these trades going in the favor of Anarchy Purple early. Yeah, you have to think they had this Alawi pick prepared. It, this definitely seems like they knew Alien Roll wanted to pick a tank. They know he likes to play Orm. And Shadow Claws said, oh, I got something special for this one. Another engage off by Alien Roll onto the Orm, though, manages to get the grass proc off and chunk him down to half. Shadow Claws just continuing to try to farm as much as he can as this big wave's about to hit his turret. He's getting a little risky staying around with having the teleport. Seems he just didn't want to lose anything, but backing now... He ends up losing the cannon off of that. But he manages to pick up the experience off of it. And with his TP, I think that his goal is just to TP back to lane. There it is. And deny the level advantage from Alien Roll. So now we see if he freezes the wave here. Uh, but it hits turret. So it might be a little tricky to freeze. Uh, we got pings coming out of the bot lane for assistance as... The bot lane just continues to trade a little bit. K-Rec walks down, boards the dragon, gets spotted on a ward of his own. Yep. 
And the CS lead in oh. the jungle is just massive right now. Shadow Claws and Alien Roll fighting again as Shadow Claws lands another one of those E's to steal the soul of the Orn. Alien Roll walks forward with the Bellows Breath trying to deny the CC, but Shadow Claws just trading and beating him another down. E. Oh, the E lands, the slap lands. That might be a very dead alien roll. Oh. Another slap. He manages to dodge the tentacles. And Shadow Claws on this Alawi is just turning out damage. But credit to Alien Roll. He is only 7 CS behind. Oh, well, now 10. Yeah, he's forced to back here. I mean, that's a big wave to lose not just the gold, but the experience. I mean, he's level 5 still. Shadow Claws got the 6 first off using his teleport. It's a big denial. All right. Let's see if we have so much for a quiet six minutes. <laughs> Definitely. Let's you see if we have a stress. second to talk about the Trundle interaction with Malzahar. As a Malzahar player, Trundle is one of the worst junglers to ever see picked because even if you dodge the knockup off of the E with your shield, that slow from the pillar manages to hit you. But of course, they're not going to give me enough time to talk. As respected Bigfoot walks over to try to take the dragon and gets spotted out by Lightning 13Z with a Vision Ward. As Allison Rustip walks around on the brand, Lightning 13Z walks across a ward yep. in the tri bush, and Germproof walks up. It looks like they're gonna have to just give up this dragon. Yeah, respected Bigfoot doesn't care that he got spotted, nor does he need to. You know, Scattercat had to back, so you have the priority mid, you have the priority bot. The Volibear definitely can't run in at the Trundle right now, so I mean that's just a good recognize of the power level and just a quick dragon. And that's Anarchy Purple turning around and really returning to Sentinels what they received all of the last game. Yeah, I mean so far this is looking like a series that might be defined by the junglers. I mean, just the early play just gives so much opportunity for the rest of the team. Uh, another familiar moment as Scattercat walks into the jungle and spots Respected Bigfoot, but this time Respected Bigfoot elects to continue on his way out of the jungle. Malzahar is a bit scarier once he has the Nether Grass. Looks like a blue buff handoff potentially to the Syndra. A little bit more trading going down in the top lane as Shadow Claws has managed to push that CS advantage to 13. Alien Roll dashes forward. Another. One of those soul snares lands by Shadow Claws and just absolutely punishing Alien Roll with the Alawi. Yep. Prophet is quietly building up a CS lead though himself. As the brand continues to stack his Dark Harvest, four Dark Harvest stacks on the brand in eight minutes is going to be a huge boon for Allison Restip yep. once they start actually trading and getting these big fights in. Germproof sticks around to try to support Nico Nya as he tries to hold this turret, but yep. the brand damage just keeps coming through. Yep, and while you were watching bot lane, there was a nice gank attempt by Trundle mid. He blew Malzahar's flash. A well-placed pillar just pretty much means you have to flash or you die. And... Shadow Claws has chunked Alien Roll down to a third of his health in the top lane as Anarchy Purple continues their full court press on every lane and really having picked into winning lane assignments across the map as Lightning 13Z walks bot lane to try to set up a play in the bot lane. Walking into the tri bush behind the turret. He has the ultimate. He can deny the turret if they want to go for the dive. Meanwhile, respected Bigfoot, knowing that he has the advantage up in the top lane, securing the Rift Herald while <coughs> Turret's Orn disabled. Out. Ornhorn comes out. Turret's disabled. Germproof running away. Germproof's gonna fall, however. But, but Nico Nya gets the kill. Nico Nya trades back to the brand who tried to stay. And he's clearing oh. the way. It's not going to be a bad fight spot, He lands the ultimate. Malzahar snipe comes out. And the heal from Prophet saves Lightning 13Z's life. So, all in all, a pretty good dive from the side of Sentinels as they managed to go two for one. And they're going to take some plates down there. They did expend a lot of ultimates, however. Yeah, but I mean, I think 
If, you, if your indexing is profit to be your carry, you had to eventually do something. I mean, he built a CS lead, but getting him a kill is big, an assist is big, Scattercat gets involvement. I mean, I think that was a nice play. You had to do something. Agree. You couldn't just let the Trundle just continuously farm. Although the, he got the Rift Herald. in the top lane, and just a little bit of chunk damage is going to come out after both Shadow Claws and Alien Roll backed from the last fight right before the dive at minimal health. Dropping the Rift but Herald. Rift Herald goes down top. Alien Roll doesn't have ult and Shadow Claws does. So does Respected Bigfoot. We might see a play down here. I think he knows that. And he's smart to just kind of back off. Alien Roll backs off. Recognizes that they'll be able to take the turret with Shelly before he can get anything done. And if he sticks around, he's just going to get dope. But he walks forward to try to clear the Shelly. And Respected Bigfoot is snuck up behind him. And they almost make a play there. Yep, the dash but he's going to be able out. to clear the Shelly regardless. Bully Bear walking down his Lightning 13Z tries to set up another play onto the bot lane. Runs through the pink ward. And he's going to... No summoners on them, but taking a lot of damage. damage. The ulti comes out the, from both brand, but it's canceled out by the ulti from Soraka. Lightning 13Z walking forward. I don't know if his Q was on cooldown, but I was waiting for him to stun the Soraka. Yeah, I think he was just a little bit ahead of the team. And I mean, Nico Nyan did a great job just getting the damage out as he was backing away to safety. I mean, that's you're seeing a little bit of the power of the Aphelios there. He had, I believe it was the Chakram just chaining the damage onto Lightning. And a uh, really good follow-up by Allison Resta to throw the Brand ultimate, but Germproof starting to scale on that Soraka. Those heals and that ultimate really make it difficult to do just about anything. Definitely. And in the oh. top lane, we have another trade between Shadow Claws and Alien Roll, and Shadow Claws ekes out another kill. Alien Roll doing some really big work to be even fighting this Alawi, but on the bot side, <laughs> Creek has just killed Alston Restip with out using the Syndra ultimate. Must have just landed a Scatter the Weak into another Q, and respected Bigfoot walks down. They're gonna take another dragon here for the side of Anarchy Purple. Yeah, that's a great call. When, you, when your Trundle's this far ahead, you want to just keep cycling these dragons. Speaking of another obnoxious interaction when you're trying to play Malzahar, the Soraka silence pool that breaks your CC reduction and still silences you. Yeah. As Scattercat was attempting to use his Q to steal the dragon over the wall, but Germproof said, not on my watch, buddy. Yeah. And we have a rare quiet moment in this game as the teams reset and try to farm. Definitely. I, I think it, this game's looking pretty good for Anarchy Purple right now. I mean, if you are Sentinels, your Kaisa's 1-0-1. You know, you have that, but Aphelios is doing fine himself. They're going to need some creative team fighting eventually, I think, with the Orn, with the Volleybear, to get a chance to get back in it. Yeah, Orn, Orn is at a point where he's never going to be able to side lane against the Alawi, and it looks like 13Z knows that, and he's starting to rotate up top to try to make a play, but he's going to stop and take the crap on his way. I, I don't know how they come back from this 2,000 gold deficit without a throw on the side of Anarchy Purple, or somehow getting... Oh! You play mid. But Creed walks forward, k gets... Knocked up, stunned, just tries to break Scattercat's yep. shield and gets punished for it. Scattercat walks forward, throws down the Malzahar ult, and Lightning 13Z there to run in, finish the stun, and pick up the kill. That's a really, really good play by Scattercat and 13Z to manage to secure a kill onto the Syndra. Yeah, I think you have to kind of credit Lightning 13Z there. It, he's, in, he's in the river up top. He has kind of an option. Does he want to go top? Does he want to go bot? I'm sure your top winner right now, I mean, you know he just he needs help. He's just getting thrashed by the Alawi, but if you go up there, I, I think you risk the Alawi just 2v1-ing you. So he goes mid, he uses the Malzahar ultimate, Scattercat hits the ultimate. I mean, that's just a free kill. That's just a good, good idea by them to get something back. And then after that play, respected Big Bigfoot running forward with the Trundle Pillar actually manages to break Scattercat's flash. So Malzahar's flash is down. And the flash on the Syndra is up as well as the teleport. Oh, TP bot lane. TP bot lane matched, however. Oh, but canceled. 
The Trundle Pillar cancels the TP from the Ornn, and so Syndra's the only one who gets down to the bot lane. But it doesn't seem to matter. Only Alston Res Tip falls, and Nikonya and Germproof are both lost, despite the fact that k -Rec and Shadow Claws double TP to the bot yep. lane. That's a huge benefit for Sentinels, who now have the TP advantage in favor of Scattercat, despite the fact that Alien Roll's TP was canceled by respected Bigfoot. Yeah, that was big. I mean, Prophet's now 2-0-2. He's got the farm lead. I mean, if you're, if you're si your prayer right now, if you're Sentinels, is you're praying for Prophet to get there. Because when you have the supporting cast of a Malzahar, and of an Orn, and of a Volibear, your, your Kai'Sa can definitely carry this game. Shadow Claws walking up a little far, trying to pick a fight, but might get CC'd down and killed. That brand damage is nothing to be laughed at. The Bully Bear runs up, and that's gonna be a shutdown, shutdown onto the brand. That's a big shutdown in favor of Sentinels, and just like that, they're back in this game. Less than a 1,000 gold difference between the two teams. However, Anarchy Purple setting up on this Rift Herald in the top lane. Yeah, a game that was looking pretty hard to come back into a few minutes ago is now pretty darn close. I mean, great credit to Sentinels for just continuing to look for plays. And the two people on their team that they're really concerned about, the Bully Bear and the Kaisa, are both 2-0 and 3 or 4 with the assists, giving a lot of gold over to their primary frontline tank and to their oh. primary damage source. He already popped the Rift Herald top lane. Looks like it'll get some chunk onto that turret, but I don't see the turret going down. Well, maybe, uh, actually. A couple Never of mind. autos, <laughs> and... Ooh, Malzahar ulti out, a lot of damage, but I think that he manages to run away from this. Yeah, well, it's good to recognize that he could just take that turret and go unpunished. Good punish from respected Bigfoot coming out there, having a phenomenal game on the Trundle, despite only being 1-0-0. Yeah, I think you look at Lightning's score, and I mean, he's having a good game himself, 2-0-4 on the Volley Bear. He's kept his bot lane in a good spot, made great ganks, but I, I think the Trundle, while he's only 1-0, is having an excellent game himself. 100% kill participation on the Volley Bear, by the way. Oh, yeah. I mean, both junglers are playing really Warrior well right out, now. Knocks up the Trundle, who has to flash away from being versatilized Prophet. Lightning 13Z runs forward, catching Nikonya, but... Shadow Claws is there. There's a shutdown by K-Rex onto the Kaisa, and another shutdown coming through on the, the Volley Bear. So both Volley Bear and Kaisa fall in that fight. The two people that really get needed to get yeah. knocked down, and even bigger, the shutdowns go over onto K-Rex, Syndra, and Nikonya's Aphelios. Yeah, and that's, that's the third dragon crazy. for respected big. That's really, really big in the end. I, I think Anarchy Purple's giving him a little taste of your own medicine. It's hard to outplay when the Syndra flashes and ults you as the Prophet. Yeah, a really good attempt to fight on two fronts, but Shadow Claws chunking out the Volley Bear low enough for Nikonya to be able to do the final blow there. And despite peeling back and almost managing to kill the Trundle, left the Prophet at less than half HP, making him really, really vulnerable to k Rex flash ult. Yeah, k Rex. I mean, he recognized that he had the opportunity, you know, when you're playing a mage like Syndra, who's, other than her E, is quite a mobile. Yeah, running down. Silence lands, flash forward from the brand, the sun goes out, ultimate comes out, and that's a shutdown onto the Aphelios that goes over to the Kai'Sa, just returning yeah. the gold that he got back. This is a great series, I mean, Oh, and, and Orn, Orn gets a kill. Kill the Lowry? Uh, wow. Yeah, Roll getting revenge from the bullying that Shadow Claws has put down on him all game says, not today, sir. That's big from him. I mean, what, what more could you want out of your finals? I mean, this is a great series. Both teams showing why they're in the finals, showing why they need to be feared, and no nobody wants to lose today. It's clear. Oh, Ulti comes out. Malzahar down. Kill goes over to Scattercat. As k Rex walks up, but the Bully Bear runs forward, ulti out of the Kai'Sa, and the Prophet knocks down k Rex. That's two more kills. The gold just swung in favor of Sentinels for the first time in this game. Wow, I mean, that's just, that's big. I mean, just wins around the board. I mean, the Orn gets the Alawi. Like, that shouldn't happen. That's just huge out of Alien Roll. And then the fight bot lane, just, just recognizing when they can fight, using the Malzahar ultimate. There's no QSS's on the side of um, Anarchy Purple yet. 
Really, really big awareness by Sentinel's butt. Oh. He manages to get the turret, but Alien Roll falls to the respected Bigfoot. Would not ever want to be an Orn playing into a Trundle. That just No, certainly hurt. not. Orn certainly around not. Things are tanky and hard to kill, and Trundle walks up and chews through you. Yeah, and I, I think you have to kind of be looking back, looking back at the draft. You know, they banned Zack in the second phase. I think you'd oh. rather him be on Zack right now than Trundle. Big time, especially because they just rotated over to the Baron. They saw the map, they saw that there was no way for Sentinels to be here fast. Everybody's resetting, their tank is down, there's no Ornhorn. And they make a great heads up call. Baron's already down at half health. Bully Bear's just getting that Lightning 13 C running in with Alcyn Restip, but a stun from k oh, comes through. The burst comes out of Shadow Claws, and k kills Alcyn Restip. They're gonna drop down. Alien Roll finally gets there by TP, but it's not gonna be enough. They secure the Baron and three kills. That's a huge swing back in the favor of Anarchy Purple as they're running with that purple monster's big buff. A little bit of favoritism from the Baron there, I think. And they're going to try to take it down mid lane. Yeah, this game just will not slow down. And that was a big Orn ultimate by Alien Roll at the end. He got like four people, but it's just since he died mid, he could only TP in so late. And it's just, I think that just showed why that death mid was so big and why it was so smart to just immediately go to the Baron. And another big problem is the damage wasn't there, but k Rick lands a stun onto Scattercat who flashes away as Nikonya hits the sniper and they're gonna back up and reset as they recognize that their Dragon Soul is coming up. Yeah, that's gonna be a big Dragon Soul as well. You love having the Cloud Soul on characters like Syndra, on Aphelios, on really on every character, but especially their carries who are generally kind of a mobile, but when they pop that ultimate, the kiting that's just going to be able to come through with the Cloud Soul is going to be huge. Oh, especially, think about the Trundle running yep. at you at twice speed wall cutting all of your stats and having his frozen domain that already speeds him up. Yeah, it's, it's good luck. <laughs> oh, but Aphelios with the late recall recognizes that Scattercat's in the top lane, a little bit of trading going down around the Dragon Pit. Aphelios... I think recall just in time to make it to this fight in if he needs to. Scattercat realizing what's going down, starting to run across the map. Yep. Some vision I mean, trading going oh. down. K-Rex lands the stun, and the ultimate Alcy Rusted base barely survives, gets the ultimate off, and it's gonna chunk out the team a little bit. Lightning 13Z runs forward, but respected Bigfoot says your stats are mine. You cannot oh. knock me down. Ulti comes out of the Orn who walks up. But Shadow Claws is on his tail and has been beating him all the way up there. He's at half health. He has to dash away. He's going to fall. And that's going to be 2 for 0 oh, just before the Dragon Soul Dragon comes up. They're yeah, not giving cool. it up to the Lightning 13C. Trying to fight still. Shadow Claws catches him. He's going to try to jump away. Get into the Dragon Pit for respect. Bigfoot turns on him. Kills him. On the other side, we have the Malcolm managing to finally knock down k -Rek, But he falls to Nikonya. And that's going to be a Dragon Soul in favor of Anarchy Purple, as well as a whole slew of kills, putting them 5,000 gold up with a Dragon Soul. Definitely. Uh, this, it, was, it was close, and then it wasn't. Just great job getting the Baron, great job getting the Dragon. I mean, it's, neither team wants to slow down, and credit to both teams for continuing to fight, but, oh, that might be a dead brand. Flashes out. Yeah. And, and I mean, the Baron buff's still up to add insult yeah. to injury. And uh, the brand damage just, it's not there. It, he hurts, but with the Soraka, it just basically makes it just negligible. The Soraka proving to be a really, really good pick for this team. And Baron buff falls off, so Anarchy Purple is going to elect to reset. They have no neutrals on the map. They've pushed all of the exterior turrets and they have their cloud soul. They want to spend their gold. They're going to be looking to end off of this next fight. Definitely. And, you know, the Prophet is about to finish stacking his man immune. So he's getting there. I mean, he's 4 1 and 5 right now. He's not necessarily weak, but the problem with some of these scaling ADs and just his build isn't even completely online yet is just he hasn't been able to just have the same impact that some of the other characters are having right now. But I do think if anything's going to keep the game in Sentinel's favor, it's going to be him just having massive team fighting once his item's complete. 
expected Bigfoot running forward, spotting out Alston Restip, but nothing going to happen out of it as Shadow Claws pushes the top lane, running a pretty standard split push right now. Alien Roll goes to match and catch that wave, but an engage coming down as Scattercat finds the ultimate onto Germproof, but falls for his troubles. The damage comes forward, Nico Nyan flashes forward, the second Bigfoot gets the kill, and that's Lightning 13 Z down. They're running it forward, Nico Nyan trades with Alison Restip, but the brand damage is gonna explode and kill the Soraka. Profits in the back line, Nico Nyan really low. They're trying to find this Kaisa, and they might have to reset. He's standing on vision, Nico Nyan doesn't realize, but he just danced around on top of a ward, and the Prophet's coming around to try to find him and snipe him out. Walks forward, tries to get a little bit of damage down. Oh, the snipe just goes wide. Shadow Claws finds the Prophet, however. Manages to land the Soul Snare. Slaps him up a bit, gets the slow. He's standing on vision. And Anarchy Purple having to split their attention a little bit to try to deal with the Prophet running around behind them while their ADC has to reset. And despite a huge fight, looks like they're not going to get anything else. Yeah, I think the Prophet just kind of dancing around there behind him, kind of just distracting him. Making the sun on the Shadow Claw. Shadow Claw goes forward. Oh, the, the healing. Manages to catch the brand, but goes down to the Orn. Little yep. bit of extra greed there, trying to get the double kill, but k Wreck in the background walks forward. Flash forward from Lightning 13Z to get the stun. The silence goes out, however. Ultimate from k Wreck comes over, and he manages to drop a ball right on the head of the Prophet, bursting him, but falls also. So the bot lane of Sentinels manages to get picked, but in turn, they got both of the solo laners off of Anarchy Purple. Yeah, that was that was big. I mean, the Prophet ulted in, and I think he got in kind of a weird spot where it's like he wanted to kill the Soraka, because if you don't kill the Soraka, you're not going to kill anyone else, but you can't ignore the Syndra that's sitting right next to you. Really interesting interaction as Scattercat gets pillared by respected Bigfoot, and that's slow from the pillar. That's the same thing that caught him at yep. level one, and that's gonna catch him again. The Orn uh, ulti comes out, but it's too late. Yeah, you you mentioned it way earlier. The the pillar just feels bad. You know, respected Bigfoot 5-0 and 6 right now. He hasn't even died. I mean, he's just having a massive game. Respected Bigfoot kind of looks like he. Uh, He's a little mad after the first game, and he's taking it out on Sentinels big time as they rush forward to the Baron to try to start this one up. k Wreck running back. They know Scattercat's down. They have a huge advantage as far as damage and ability to team fight on this one. Wards spot out both the Bram and the Cinder. Cinder walks forward, gets the ult, pops out and rest hit. The Bully Bear goes down, running into the back line. Aphelios kills him. Alien Rule's gonna fall. Also, Shadow Claw secures that kill. That's gonna be the Baron turned over. The Anarchy Purple as they collapse back onto it. The Prophet decides, maybe I just farm these wolves. I can't get over there. Scattercat's gonna have to catch Bot Wave. And that's gonna be a Baron and three kills oh. towards the Anarchy Purple. The Baron did just cancel Creek's teleport. I think he was trying to go bot lane to just really just keep the pressure up. But the, the Baron was Sentinel's ally right there. Uh, the Elder Dragon's gonna come up. Are we gonna see two games with an Elder Dragon taken, or are Anarchy Purple gonna be able to push this down mid lane and end it? I think or they have still the potential down for 10 to push it out. Yeah, I think they have the potential to just end it here. They might decide to play it safe. Inhibitor turret down. Inhibitor falls also. Big chunks coming down. Oh yeah. The Oh, oh, and the forward from Prophet manages to pick up the Soraka, tries to stealth out, but it's going to fall to Creek, and that's all that's going to come through as the Orn ulti disengages. ADC for support doesn't, yeah. doesn't do it. I, yeah, I, I don't think know if you can call, be... yeah. not when the dragon's up, I don't know if you can call that. I, I, you know, he, he feels like he needs to make a big play, you know, he feels like he needs to keep him in the game, but... I don't think they have the opportunity to really stop this dragon now. Oh, oh they big chunk coming trouble. down! They land the Brand ultimate as well as the Malzahar ultimate onto respective oh. Bigfoot, but he's too fast! Yeah. He hops the ulti, steals some stats, and manages to just run away at top speed across that frozen domain with the ulti and the dragon soul. But they're gonna get pushed off of this dragon soul. Big ult! Their EQ from K-Rex manages to spell it out. Yep. Lightning to 25%. Respected Bigfoot healing off of this blue buff as he's trying to hand it over to K-Rex. Nico Nyo walks forward, the TP coming in from Shadow Claws, and they might be trying to force 
EQ comes out, scatter the weak, knocks down Alice and Res Tip as k -Rec continues to catch people out. Germ proofs back. Soraka's here. The healing battery's here. Everybody's back up at full health, courtesy of the Soraka. Lightning's here, jumps in, is gonna try to get this heal off, but it's not enough help. k -Rec just disappears in yep. Elder Dragon. Baron buff. Flash forward from the second Bigfoot. They catch Alien Roll. Nico Nyan's gonna knock him down. That's gotta be game. Prophet's yeah. waiting in the side, trying to make a sneaky play, but there comes the stealth steps on a ward. They know he's there. He thinks he's being sneaky. Yeah. k rex Danzen playing game as three try to push it down mid. Scattercat walks up to the side. Brand's there. They're gonna try to use some damage, try to slow this down, but the damage coming out of respected Bigfoot and Shadow Claws onto this turn is just too much. Prophet finally tries to make his play, but the Soraka and the Syndra are just too much for him. They can't do it. Brand falls trying to defend the final turret. The Malzahar ults out, and that's going to be game two. GG. It's yeah. a wild, wild game to Anarchy Purple, who came back after game one and said, I don't think so. We are not done. That does not reflect how our team plays. We're going to take it to you this game. Yeah, and I mean, right now, you just... All credit to respected Bigfoot. I mean, that was a uh, again a great game out of like the whole team, but I, I really think th the Trundle he just bounced back so hard from that first game and just re he didn't even die that whole game. Even they got him low a couple times, but he was constantly burning the mouse R flash. He was constantly he was one and zero for the longest time, but he was just constantly just getting objectives, getting dragons. Great game out of him. I, I think if now we're going into game three. Both teams have won a game. It feels like it could be anybody's series. I think the like there's three big things I think you have to hit on. The Syndra pick is like a must get for either team, I think. You really want to get that one. If Alien Roll, if you know he's going to go for these tanks, you might have to ban the Alawi or you might have to try to pick him later. But if you know that's what he's going to go for, then Anarchy Purple can probably feel comfortable into it. And then also, I just think... You got to respect the Trundle maybe now and maybe ban that out or don't pick something so early that the Trundle can go into because I, I, I think the biggest thing might just end up being who gets Syndra as well. Uh, I think Syndra priority's got to be huge for this next game. I agree with you. Um, k Rec looked absolutely dominant yeah. on it. Scattercat looked fairly dominant on it. I think that side selection should go to anarchy purple in this game and if i check i believe they chose red side again identifying that that worked for them this time so i would like to see them ban out the syndra and deny it from scattercat since they don't have the option to first pick it we'll see what they do but that would be my biggest thought there uh i don't know what you do as sentinels i think that you try to put this one in the back pretend like it never happened the Kaisa looked good. Uh, the Volibear yeah. looked good early, but across the map, Anarchy Purple picked winning lanes and won with them. Yeah, I think you kind of just kind of just got to go back to what you did in game one. I mean, you, you just, I mean, both games were, they, they were close moments, but in the end, both games felt pretty one-sided by one of the teams. And you just got to go back to your formula if you are Sentinels here. I, I, you, you know, Warwick wasn't even banned and you chose not to pick him, so I, I don't know, I, maybe you just go back to it. Lightning looked amazing on the Warwick. I think you pull that back out. I think you got to try to protect Alien Roll a little bit more this game because you saw how unstoppable he was when he got the Scion and he wasn't bullied. Get Scattercat a good matchup. I, I think bot lane, both teams are probably going to kind of keep going in the same fashion, but I really think... You really just got to secure the top half of the map if you're Sentinels. And if you're Anarchy Purple, if you secure the top half of the map again, I, I think that's going to really decide the game. I, I tend to agree with you. We know Sentinels want to play through their bottom half of the map. And if their top half of the map has losing lanes in every lane, I think that they're setting themselves, themselves up to be in big trouble. Um, and it, it's really hard to pick an ace from, or to pick an MVP from this game because, I mean, k -Rack was dominant on the Syndra, yep. but I can't pick k -Rack over Bigfoot because when yeah. you don't have a lane opponent at level one because your Trundle runs up and murders Malzahar and yeah. you get to be playing from a two-wave advantage all game, you can't complain about that. The only person I think I might be able to choose is Shadow Claws, who just destroyed everything that game. 
Yeah. But ultimately, respect to Bigfoot was immortal that game. Yeah. And didn't die. And yeah. I don't know how you can ever pick against the guy who doesn't die. I agree. And if you were looking to kind of point at like the ace or the high point of Sentinels, it was definitely the Prophet. You know, he had a good game on the Kaisa, but just didn't really get the chance to ever truly like get online to truly have an opportunity. It, it felt at that at the end he was just kind of wandering around at the back of those fights, just not even knowing how to get into it. And I don't really feel like he had an opportunity to. Uh, I, I would agree with you. I think that early on, it looked like Lightning 13Z might be up to some of his old tricks. He had a 100% kill participation over the six kills that they had. But he just, he got to a point where Volibear's kiteable and you don't want to run into an Alawi. You can't run into a Syndra. You can't run into a Trundle. You can't run into an Aphelios. And the pick just didn't provide the same amount of CC and damage that the Warwick pick. So I really want them to put him back on that power pick for him. And I guess we'll see. I think we're going to take a quick break and then be right back here for game three. All right. See you all then. Right, and it's Cage the Cage Reaper and Gruer back for game three of Anarchy Purple versus Sentinels. And we'll be getting the uh, pick and man up real quick, but it looks like they may or may not have listened to some of what we thought. We've got a Syndra ban on the side of Anarchy Purple, denying that away from the Scatter Cat, which was one of the number one things we thought really had to come through in this game. And it looks like Sentinels banned the Soraka out, which we didn't notice that they did in the first game, but they've banned that against Anarchy Purple two out of three games now. Really didn't like seeing it. And looks like they wanted to deny that. And after getting the Syndra denied from them, they turned around and denied the Orianna from k -Rec. 
So we've got a Lux Malzahar matchup with K-Rec playing the Malzahar, giving us a, a bit of an interesting flip where K-Rec just follows Scattercat and picks the champion after him that he's played every game before. Yeah, but I think a big thing to note is in both the other games, the Ash was banned away from another, ARD Purple, and now that came through. Another big champion was they banned the Zyra away both games. So Sentinels has banned away this Ash Zyra bot lane, really didn't want to see it. And it looks like they left it up and Anarchy Purple took one look at it and said, well, that's ours. Yep. And the Kane ban also, they banned Kane in game two. So Anarchy Purple, I'm guessing that's got to be three comfort picks right there that they yeah, saw no on doubt. the board and said, we're taking them. Yeah, no doubt. And, you know, Anarchy Purple on the red side, once again, you know, they got to pick into the tank. They got to pick into the Scion. So, you know, they're probably feeling comfortable with that matchup. They got their comfort pick bot lane. You know, for the Prophet, they go for a really late pick Twitch, which, you know, he is your, your, your indexing onto him as your carry. You want him on a late game scaler. They've banned away your Kogma. They've banned away your Vayne. I don't, I don't know. I, I'm interested to see how the Twitch plays out. Personally, I don't think Twitch is the greatest when you're in such threat to get bullied. Like, the, the Zyra and this Ash lane seems very scary to me. I, I tend to agree with you, especially with the Zillion, but the real interesting thing will be Twitch stealth with Zillion bombs is going to provide some real submarine opportunities with <laughs> some sneaky stuns and plus the movement speed from Zillion. That Twitch is going to have the ability to get into a lot of really strange, strange places. Definitely, but, and you know, if the Warwick can have a similar game to how he had game one, and then you throw a Zillion ultimate not even just on your Twitch, but on your Warwick, you, you might not even be able to kill the Warwick. So, well, And the move speed buff from Zillion onto Warwick is going to make his ultimate half of the map. Well, what's your opinion on to the mid lane matchup here? Um, Malzahar Lux, I think that it's probably tilted in favor of Lux early and Malzahar late. That matchup is going to come entirely down to jungle pressure. Lux doesn't have a whole lot of agency by herself, but she sets up phenomenally to get ganked by either the Twitch or the Warwick. Uh, Malzahar obviously is going to just want to flash on top of Twitch or Zillion. Probably Zillion if you stop and think about it for a second, because the Zillion being able to resurrect the Twitch is going to make it really, really hard for them to be able to shut down the primary carry potential on Sentinels. But uh, I like the fact that Sentinels went back to the Warwick first pick. They they realized that worked for them. They wanted to get it again. Uh, Anarchy Purple taking their comfort picks, but Kane and Warwick, I don't know that that goes in Kane's advantage too much. I know that he bullies a lot of champions, kind of lucked out into the fact that they picked Scion later which yeah. enables Kane to use Red Kane a little bit more efficiently. Yeah, definitely. I think it's kind of the thing that's most flip-flop between the games is which jungler has that like primary pressure early game, and it's definitely back in Sentinel's favor. And I think if they can find that powerful jungle mid combo like they did the first game with the Lux and the Warwick, then I think they'd have potential to just snowball. And if they snowball that, you see what happens. You know you have the reliable Twitch, the reliable Profit carry bot lane, so I'm, I'm really excited to see how Lightning 13-7 bounces back in this third game where everything's on the line. I am too. The other really interesting little note to make before we hop into game here is Sentinels banned out both the Orn and the Alawi, saying that they didn't like that top lane at all and wanted nothing to do with it. And Shadow Claws, who to my knowledge is a little bit more of a utility tank player, is on the Wukong. So that should be a really interesting change up as we get into game here. Yep, let's jump into it. All right, and as we load onto the rift here, we have a couple of early pings. I'm not sure what that alcove ping means. They might be trying to set up something sneaky, but the way that these games have gone, both teams tend to like to set up the five point. I think yep. that both teams have a much better engage, though, early in this game than they have in the past. Yeah, I'm personally sometimes a fan of, you know, you don't invade the first two games. They don't expect well, it the third game. Here it comes. They found the Scion, but that's not who they were looking for. 
Sion does get a nice little chunk if, if only someone else was in there with him. But some really good deep vision traded out and defensive vision from the side of Sentinels as they're trying to chase down k -Rack, who may have walked into the wrong spot, but he flashes out, costs him his flash, but they have vision on all five members. They've got a great deep ward down from respected Bigfoot. And the Ash and Zyra, Germproof, and Nico and y'all walking over, they're going to have phenomenal vision of this map. They're going to be able to track Lightning 13Z early in this game in a way that they weren't able to even think about in the first game. Yep. And something I've noticed that I want to point out is at most of the runes are pretty traditional, but Twitch went for the Hail of Blades, which uh, it's not unheard of as opposed to like a Conqueror or a Press the Attack, but it, it's interesting. He's going to be looking for that quick kind of burst assassination this game. So what you're saying is we're going to see an early Blade of the Ruined King on. Most likely, yes. Uh, pretty standard starts from both junglers as Kane does his special obnoxious clear the raptors first before going over to his buff. And Warwick opts into the blue to Gromp that is his staple and is going to get seen by this early ward and pinged out. That's the power of the ward. I mean, Wukong can completely play with no hesitation now. You're feeling safe if you're Malzahar. You know the bot lane has a minute to be able to kind oh, of play powerful. Oh, big snare landed by Scattercat, but k -Rack manages to land the silence to prevent too much trade back, but then eats the E as this mid lane, Scattercat should have the early damage and push advantage, but k -Rack doing well for himself not to far, fall too far behind. Definitely, definitely. Warwick is pathing kind of downwards. I I'd be interested to see if he wants to look for a maybe a play bot lane or if he's just going to look for a scuttle crab in a minute. He took a really conservative he's path. He's not going to be spotted here. Oh, trade's going down in the top lane as Shadow Claws tries to fight the Scion. And as strong and tanky as Wukong is early, that's not going well for him. As both junglers are in the river here trying to get ready for this crab spawn but because they both started topside it's going to be different lightning manages to get the e off and cues through respected bigfoot to get out of what might have been a real bad spot for him after germ proof catches him with the zyra snare definitely it was smart of k rec to walk down you know he had the push the bot lightning lane 13 was very Z, though, quick. back in sees the blood on respected bigfoot and bites the crab but keeps on running as k rec <laughs> and germ proof respond first Sometimes you just don't want to give the crab up. I, I've been there, but that, that, that was a little risky. He got out fine, but it, it was close. I, I think he thought he was going to be able to pull off the 1v1 and uh, Anarchy Purple and their whole team fight, team oriented mentality popped into lane a little sooner than he expected and he managed to get himself out. Yeah, no, he definitely would win the 1v1, but something I mentioned after the first game was if you weren't going to deny the Warwick, you needed to protect him better. And k Rec was there both times, hovering right there to make sure nothing Can't go into the bot lane as the cleanse gets burned off of the Prophet, and Flash comes out of Allison Res Tip, and that's going to be all of the defensive sums with the exception of Twitch's Flash out on the side of Sentinels off of a great gank by respected Bigfoot. And... Germproof landing a great snare. Yep, and you're, you're pretty low mana right now as the Zillion, so in a bit of a rough spot. Twitch is kind of hunting, though, in the invis. Uh, respect to Bigfoot coming back for the regain. The Zillion bomb takes out Germproof. The TP comes in as Shadow Claws is going to try to run down the Prophet. The Vision comes out. Ash lands the slows, and that's going to be a kill over to Shadow Claws for his teleport. And yeah, the first, first blood's big, though. I mean, I think. That kind of showed the power of the Hail of Blades. He got invis, he kind of snuck up on him, and he just gets those three quick auto attacks off, plus the Zillion Bomb was enough to secure the first blood. But it was a good teleport punish. But Anarchy Purple knowing exactly what they want to do, they made it, They made the play, they spent the TP. They're going to go straight onto this dragon. Scattercat's here to try to deal some damage and try to deny it, but despite holding the Lux spells to try to get the maximum damage off, Red Team's still going to secure it. Lightning 13Z doing a good job invading, taking the Krux to try to punish respected Bigfoot as a big wave crashes into the top lane that Alien Roll pushed. He's going to be almost two levels up and two plates up on Shadow Claws, evening out that gold advantage from the TP. But 
the way that Anarchy likes to play, I think that dragon is almost worth it. Yeah, I think it's definitely the, the TP was good on its own. You know, you made sure you got the trade on the Twitch, but then recognizing to immediately go to the dragon, so it's not just for a one for one, was intelligent as well. You know, but that did give Alien Real time to get two plates plus a little bit of a CS lead. You have a CS lead mid. You have a CS lead bot. So the lanes overall are going pretty good in the favor of Sentinels right now. Yeah, really, it was about a thousand gold trade to get that dragon. Anarchy Purple decided they wanted the dragon and they'd give up the thousand gold and the tempo because you've got about a kill's worth of gold lead on the Scion right now. You've got about even gold on the junglers despite Kane's farm advantage just because of the fact that Warwick was able to invade. And about a kill's worth of gold advantage on Scattercat because he's been able to push the waves before getting to objectives. Yeah, and there's big... clear isn't quite there yet. Yeah, there's the big difference. Scattercat's walking back to lane with the lost chapter. Malzar's walking back with only the components. I mean, you know how big of a spike lost chapter is for almost every mage. So, I mean, that alone's a... Let, we can look see if he can try to punish that with his mana pool right now. And another really big thing to point out is two amplifying tones on the Zillia to one on the Zyra is a pretty big swing, as well as the fact that Prophet has the Vamp Scepter. Oh, but coming in bot, big book coming in bot again. Spins on top of him. The vision given by the respected Bigfoot being on top, as well as the snare from Germproof. And that's going to be the profit falling, and they donate the kill over onto Nikonya, making sure that they're getting their ADC in a spot to fight back. Yeah, that that, that feels bad. It's a smart gank by respecting Bigfoot. It's kind of similar to the Zack. The can can come from such weird angles that you're not expecting. And I, we need to keep our eyes on bot lane because as soon as Ash and Zyra hit six and have those ultimates, if you don't have Flash, I mean, it's likely another kill is going to come through. And despite the advantage that Alien Roll got and cut, catching back up, Wukong's at a power point right now and is able to just bully him in lane still. So Shadowclaw's walking down the river trying to pick up these fruits and finding Warwick trying to take the Scuttle Crab. He's going to be able to push him off of that at least temporarily before trying to start it up himself. Yeah, the level 6 on the, on the Wukong to the level 5 on the Warwick leaves Warwick in kind of a precarious position, but his laners are around. Oh, but he walks up and smites it as Scion ults down, but Shadowclaws with an excellent flash to dodge the Scion ult. But he still has to eat the Warwick ult, and Fear uses the E to dash away, and despite playing that excellently, Shadowclaws still falls. And there's a trade back as Kane ults onto Scattercat, and the ulti from K-Rek and big, respected Bigfoot are going to manage to catch Scattercat as he tries to roam up to back up his team. Yep, I mean, when the Malzar ults you, there's and not much you can do. And they manage to find Lightning 13C oh. on the back end also. They're going to chase him out as he takes a greedy path. He flashes and misses the wall, but manages to get out anyways. Yeah, the flash with the Nimbus Cloak gives you some disengage, but I I'm really glad Lightning went back to the Warwick. I mean, you saw just the power he had on the... Basically soloed out the Wukong after the Scion ult was flashed. I mean, it's just... He feels he just looks so comfortable on this pick. I, I agree with that in a big way. Bummer for Sentinels that they got caught, but another E from the Zyra lands. Germproof Zyra, despite getting caught early, he's been looking really good. But the Twitch hit level six, and that advantage is going to be huge for him. Lightning 13Z coming down with the run speed on the Warwick, but the Ash Arrow from Nico Nya that she has held that long. I would have thought they would have used that on the Twitch earlier, but instead holding it. In, baiting out the Warwick to come running in. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of surprised as well. I mean, she was low at one point. I'm surprised. That was, you know, smart by her, knowing the limits, waiting for the perfect moment, because if they didn't have the Ash ult there, the Warwick probably would have been able to pick something up, or at least blow the flash. Bot lane staying, behind, staying around because they know the dragon's up, and if they back, they're going to give up this dragon for free. As Krek walks around behind, they see Scattercat and Warwick trying to make the dive. Germproof is going to fall to the Warwick. Warwick's going to drop to the turret. Nico Nya doing a really good job of zoning in the flash to dodge out. Oh, he manages to get away from the initial kill and trades back because Scattercat has to use his ulti but is still taking turret shots. So beautifully played by the bot lane of Anarchy Purple to go two for one in a dive situation.
and deny the dragon that now K-Rag and respected Bigfoot, who finally shows up to the bot lane, are going to be able to take for free with the mid and jungler down on the side of Sentinels. Yeah, no, it was definitely a nice ult by Scattercat to, to make sure that you got the Ash so it wasn't like a disaster, but the biggest thing ends up being the dragon again. And at this point, they're, I mean, they're cycling these dragons quickly. It's another, it's going to be another Cloud Soul, which is not the worst thing to be up against if you don't have dragons. You're not as scared of like an Ocean Soul or an Infernal Soul, but, but still, with the pace at which they're taking dragons right now, you got to be a little worried. Well, an Anarchy Purple once again on a team comp that benefits massively from the ultimate reduction as well as the movement speed on the ultimate because the Ash Arrows are such a big part of the way she plays. The Zyra ultimate that enables Zyra to buff up all of her plants. Pain's Alzahar ultimate, ultimate that heals it. Alzahar's ultimate. And the biggest one to me is Wukong ultimate being able to run faster and CC more. Yeah, no doubt. I... I'm, I don't know, it's, it's, you're in a little bit of a tough spot as Sentinels, because obviously they have the opportunity. We've already discussed in the pregame how their draft can really succeed, but with the pace of the game right now... Lightning 13Z spotted out as he's trying to take the Rift Herald behind enemy lines, and respect yep. to Bigfoot and Shadow Claws walk down, see him with the Scrying Orb, K-Rek with the first walk over, and this is actually going to be yep. Rift Herald over to the side of Anarchy Purple, courtesy oh. of a Warwick Leash. But a re-engage coming in. TP comes in from the Scion. Warwick walks up, gets the fear off, dashes through the Wukong to dodge, and it's going to be a disengage. Oh, oh. but the Scion ulti comes out. He cancels. Yeah, they don't. They don't want that fight. <laughs> yeah. That's a little bit too much. Good call on whoever said we don't want to follow that into the jungle. Yeah. But yeah, no. I mean, Anarchy Purple says thank you for the leash, Warwick, and they they just kind of sneak that one away. It, it was a. I, I like the idea to try to scrap there at the end, recognizing when they needed to back off. Maybe if they were a little bit sooner, they could have taken a fight. Oh, but Wukong's looking for Scion. Wukong ultimate comes out. Is the second cast going to come out, or is he just going to back up and push the wave? You can hold that second cast longer than it seems sometimes. Scion walks up, charges up the knockup. Is Shadow Claws going to re-engage here? No, nope. just going to dash forward, finish clearing the wave. And that's going to be all she wrote for that top lane play. We've got Warwick wandering down through the jungle trying to set something up. k -Rek thought he was going to get a back off and then decided he either needed a little bit more gold or he wanted to push one more wave before resetting. And he's at the point on Malzahar right now that it's real easy for him to push waves. Yep. So let's see him push that wave back out. Looks like he might be no. getting a blue buff hand off. <laughs> he oh, thought nope. he was going to get it. The Bigfoot <laughs> said, I don't think so. <laughs> Hey, I, I've been there when you're feeling yourself as the jungle. You, sorry, mid laner. I, I think I'm gonna take this one. I mean, we play with a Kane one trick as well, and I get blue buffs generally unless he's playing Kane, and then it seems like the blue buff just never gets mentioned. But respected Bigfoot heading over this wall with the Rift Herald down into the bot lane, making sure there's no vision. Oh, Ash Arrow from a long range. Snipes out the Prophet, but the Flash cleanse away. Respected Bigfoot fighting Lightning 13Z at the top side as Ash walks forward with the slow, and the Zyra Q just barely misses. Scattercat on the backside lands the snare off of the Warwick ulti, and they manage to pick up Respected Bigfoot, who got a little over aggressive on the back end, thinking he could fight the 1v1. The Lux ultimate snipes Germproof down to just a little bit of health, but they manage to disengage and slow down the Warwick to prevent the follow-up kill. Yeah, there's so much happened right there. You saw the why you take cleanse. The cleanse allowed him to barely live. Great roam down by Scattercat to secure the, just to secure the cane, and then the ultimate barely left the Zyra alive. Really big series of plays to make that just be a one in favor of Sentinels. A lot of really, really good setup, and then really good counterplay on that particular set. Yeah, we're 15 minutes in, and the gold lead is almost exactly even. I mean, what more could you want in your finals game? But Dragon is up in 45 seconds. You don't want to let them get the in a bit of a point. dangerous place, walking forward to clear some more. It's the slope and the stun out of the Zillion. Nikunya might have walked up just a little bit too far. The Q through, but he flashes the safety, turns around, gets the slow, and Nikunya walking away yep. with his life after getting collapsed on once again.
Barely, barely. That shows the power. Once that zillion hits you with the slow, there's no dodging the double bombs. But Nikonya really showing why this champion was banned away the first couple of games. Oh, definitely. He's having a great game on the Ash as well, but I really think this next dragon's gonna be really important. But they Rift Herald mid just to keep the pressure. Scattercat lasers the wave to try to knock that down. There's no plates for them to take with this, and so they managed to get half of the damage out on that turret. But other than the gold for Rift Herald, that's really not that much of a swing. And they're now rotating over to the dragon, so maybe they burned a couple of cooldowns, but... Well, Scion Lightning grabbed Lightning Sure DC almost turret. walks forward into trouble, but this scrying orb from Scattercat manages to give it away. Lands the snare on the Shadow Claws, whose clone is down, but he flashes an ult, and between the stacking ultimates, they pick up full. Wow, yeah, that was a lot of burst. Warwick kind of just disappeared off the screen. The Ash ulti... The Malzahar ulti, the Warwick ulti, or Wukong ulti, and Flash plus the Zyra ulti, just locking him down, shutting it down. That's Dragon 3 over to Anarchy Purple. They've identified their win condition. Scion ultis away through yep. the exhaust. But what was big there, when the when they went for the Rift Trail play mid, you know, Scion was still hitting that turret top, and he did manage to get his team first turret, so that was, that was big. So it looks like they've pretty much decided to sacrifice the top lane. They've said, ah, we can't fight Scion, we can't kill Scion. Let's just enable this Wukong to be at all of our team fights. And if we burn everything securing our team fights, that'll be what it is. Mm -hmm. There's about a thousand gold advantage for the Scion and growing, but the three dragons in favor of Anarchy Purple gives them a really clear way to win this game. Definitely, but you do have to wonder, are we gonna, is it going to be like game one where the Scion eventually reaches a point of basically he cannot die? I mean, he's kind of there right now, unless they're really focusing him. Yeah, yeah it'd I mean, be interesting we, to track him. We see the trade go down between Shadow Claws and Alien Roll, and while Shadow Claws is the one that walks away with full health, Alien Roll's two levels up and didn't ever look threatened. But respected Bigfoot's in the area floating around. And the trade goes down. Respected no, Bigfoot on the know. gank. Shadow Claws dealing damage. The knockup comes through from the cane. And Alien Roll flashes out. But they go forward onto him. Still so much mobility in the Wukong and the cane that they manage yep. to catch him. Yep. They chase him down with the red buff, the flashes. And that's going to be a kill onto the Scion. Yeah, they recognized that he had to ult away from the dragon fight. Didn't have it as an escape there. It took him a while, but they did kill him. And they're setting up Anarchy Purple here in that bush, trying to death push, but Scattercat sniffs it out, lands the snare onto Germproof, breaks the Malzahar shield, Shadow Claws runs forward, but they're just not going to be able to contest this Rift Herald without their tank. Their front line's down, they're going to give it up, and that's another Rift Herald over to the side of Anarchy Purple. Yeah, I, I think Anarchy Purple's doing a good job of picking someone off. And the Shadow Claws goes forward again with the Wukong ultimate, but he's going to try to get out. The snare lands from Scattercat. Scattercat does a great job turning that one around, and they manage to blow up Shadow Claws. Flash forward from k -Rack on Malzahar, and that lands, but the burn goes down. The Zillion ulti comes out, saves Prophet's life, but he gets knocked up anyways, and manages to get away. Oh, but not so quite close. as the burn and the space aids take him down. Yeah, the the Lux the Lux is coming up huge in these fights. All credit to Scatter Cat. I mean, he's he's playing a really really good game, really keeping his team in it right now. But Anarchy or Sentinels, excuse me, is struggling to get a fight where everyone's alive at the same time. I mean, the Dragon fight you had Lux and Warwick get death bushed. Scion got caught before the Rift Herald. I, I want to see a true five v five, and they haven't been able to really get that yet. And I think that Anarchy Purple wanted that. You watch the flash forward from k -Rec just to, he sees that the Twitch isn't moving and he goes, oh, I'm getting that right now. He flashes forward, the Zillion ulti comes out, but they keep walking forward. Nico Nyo with the slows, they manage to not only knock down the Twitch once, but then with the perfectly timed knockup from the cane, knock him down a second time. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and right now, you know, your Twitch, he has his Blade of the Ruin King. He's working oh, sneaky forward. play going down in the bot lane as the Warwick runs forward, the Twitch sneaks up and they throw out the Zyra ulti, Wukong goes forward, but the Scion ult saves his life, Wukong and Warwick manage to pick up the kill with the help of Scion. They go forward, Germproof's gonna fall to the Deluxe Laser, and this might be a fight in favor of Sentinels getting them back into this game. Nikonya falls to the bomb from Zillion, 
as Krek and respected Bigfoot are stuck running away from a Warwick that's chasing them down. The silence comes through as Krek and respected Bigfoot get out. But that was a huge fight. That was what Sentinels needed. That was huge. They read my mind. I mean, they couldn't kill the Twitch because why? The Scion was right there. He got a perfect ultimate, knocked up the Wukong, chained it perfectly. Scattercat hit like a four-man Luxol, chunked everyone. Like, that's exactly what they needed to do. And I'm glad they finally found it. And with that, they're in a 2,000 gold advantage. So Sentinels, despite being down three dragons, are managing to, for the most part, hold a gold advantage in this game or keep the gold even. Yeah, and right now, you know, Scattercat's huge. The Warwick is fine. The Trun or the oh, Scion's hard to kill. Oh, oh. but the Lux Shield yeah. <laughs> saved his life. And I think Krek realizes that the Prophet's right above him and he's got nobody yeah. there. He cancels that channel and gets himself out. Yeah, I think that was that was a smart cancel, but I really your Twitch right now, chilling at one item. He's probably working towards his Runans. I think if Twitch can get to can get to three items, which is usually what you need to start being able to take over, then Sentinels can really feel like they might have a way to just like win the game. But Scattercat in the back yeah. of the Dragon Pit here is kind of a dangerous oh, position. Oh, bad spot. Plus, yeah, well, he was flash. just sitting there waiting. He was acting as an extra ward at that point in time. <laughs> and just to break both of both K Rex spell shield though and chunk down yeah. respected Bigfoot. Putting yep. Sentinels in a good spot to contest this dragon, it's still a point. They really have to try to take this fight. Hey, here comes another 5v5. Starts the dragon on opposite sides of the map from their bases. The two teams are set up looking to pick each other off. Some early spells going out, searching people out. Dragons at half health. Looks like Sentinels want to back up off of this a little bit. As the Prophet tries to stealth into the back line, Wukong goes forward, lands an ult. As Lightning 13 z goes forward, he manages to secure the dragon. Sion kills Malzahar. Ash manages to pick up the Twitch, however. Germproof barely survives. They drop another. And Ash picks up kills on both Sion and Warwick while the Lux manages to pick up the kill on the Wukong. But Kane and respected Bigfoot follow that, knock that down, chasing down the Zillion. The Ash flashes to get the slow off. Kane picks up the kill. That's the first kill onto the Zillion this game and an ace in favor of Anarchy Purple. They may not have gotten that dragon, but they just took back the gold lead, and it is now dead even in gold off of that ace for two fight, and they're running up to the Baron. Yeah, good job securing the dragon, so it wasn't a complete loss. You know, you, you denied them soul, but great fight out of Miko Nya. I mean, he based almost had a quadra kill, basically. He got a triple, almost a quadra. That was a giant fight by him. You're seeing why the Ash pick is so respected, why it had been banned. Sion teleports in to match the TP into the Baron Pit that gave it away. Nikunya walks forward, slows him down, but despite having the oh. early move, Flash Malzahar at the Flash Malzahar ult manages to pick out the Prophet. Prophet drops, Warwick walks forward, Zyra ults to disengage, and Lightning manages to drop the damage just too much. They pick up another kill, and there goes the Sion. That's a triple kill for Krek on this Malzahar. Flash forward, ulti, and then manages to burn down both the Warwick and the Scion. The Ash Arrow goes wide, and the Disengage comes through. But after getting caught on the Baron and almost losing the fight, this is still going to be a turn back onto the Baron by Anarchy Purple. Yeah, I think Twitch, he was kind of, he was trying to clear that control ward, but k Rank just flashed on him instantly. I mean, just great, no hesitation by him. Shadow Claws goes forward, manages to spot out the Zillion, chases him up a bit, burns the ultis but can't manage to, manage to pick that up. Scattercat oh, trying the zone. Everybody's low in the Dragon Pit. Scattercat's looking yeah. for a play. Nikunya at low health. Laser comes through, doesn't quite get the steal. The rest of the team's back up, but the Prophet's here. Ratatat tat comes through, Germ Proof drops. Everybody else manages to get out though, just barely as Anarchy Purple takes the Baron. Uh, barely Warwick's gets out their life. Warwick's chasing but he's not going to get anybody, and that's going to be a Baron for one, which is the best possible outcome for Anarchy Purple in that situation. Yeah, at least you got a kill onto your Twitch, but, you know, right now the Twitch is... I mean, look at Ash's itemization and compare it to the Twitches, and at that Dragon fight, Twitch had a pretty big ultimate. He was hitting, like, three people, but the damage just isn't online. I think we're really seeing why Nikunya was denied this Ash. When you're... Wind is when your wind condition is your ADC, and the enemy ADC has a champion that they're so comfortable on that they're gonna arguably be the most devastating 
champion on their team, Nico Dion leading kill participation as an ADC on the team right now. You yeah. can't let that champion go through draft. No, I, I think you're seeing why it had been so feared and he's having a good game on it, but you know, Sentinels, they're not out of this by any means. It's only a oh, the spear land. Oh. Ulti, germ proof at half health. Heal comes through though, as Nico Nya saves his support. Yeah. I mean, Scattercat's trying his best, man. He's, he's just constantly trying to find something, and credit to him. But with the Baron, it's this turtle will probably eventually fall. With the next wave, maybe. You know, they have the Ash man, and the Zyra. They have every ult. I, I think if anyone on Anarchy Pur or on Sentinel steps up too far, Anarchy Purple will probably just go on them. And the really big thing in the favor of Sentinels is they have flashes up almost across the board. And there goes the Scion ulti, looking for the back line, manages to get all the way through to the back line, tries to knock up the Zyra, but not quite. The Wukong ultimate comes through, but a big Lux laser manages to hit three or four, and that goes two kills down to the Scion, courtesy of a stun from Zillion and a laser from Ash. Anarchy Purple stuck running away, and that's gonna be a Scion, 4-2. Yeah, I mean, we're barely a 1,000 a one thousand gold lead. I mean, this game is close right now. And that was a good fight. I mean, it shows the power of the Scion when he gets where he wants to be, lands ultimate, and zones the carries, and even after you kill him, he's still hitting you. He's still doing damage. And with the dragon coming up soon, that was exactly what Sentinels needed to try to knock the Baron buff off of as many of Anarchy Purple's members as possible, trying to get it so they can get positioned for this. Yep. And it's up in five seconds. I, I, it looks like it's going to be a 5v5. Scion's up. Wukong just came up, but Wukong has the TP to get there if he needs to. We've got the team starting to position around this. Which wants to back. He has 1,600 in his pocket, but he's not going to have time. They're starting this up. And the Ash and the Kane just burn it. They get it down to 3,000 health before backing up because they see lightning on the side. The Malzahar ulti comes out. They CC up the Warwick to try to kill him, but the Zillion ult comes through. And you see on the flip side, oh, Nikunya on the Rampage kills the Warwick, courtesy of the Zyro. The Prophet manages to pick up germ proof, and Nikunya kills the Scion in return. Right now, it's a two for one in, oh no. Yeah, two for one in favor of Anarchy Purple, but health bars are low everywhere. Oh, the Prophet with the stealth sneaks up behind k -Rek, knocks him down, but the Ash Arrow comes through, cleanse on the Lux as Scattercat goes forward. The Prophet's gonna pick up the kill. Oh, not quite. Goes over to Scattercat on the Kane, and that's a huge fight. Big fight. I think they can just take the Dragon, but it looks like maybe they're just choosing to back. Uh, I think they're resetting because they're scared of the Wukong going off. We've got low health bars on both the Zillion yep. and the Lux. No ults are up. Lux actually ult is back up because its cooldown is 20, 29 seconds right now. Yeah, big to note, Twitch just completed his Runans. He just got a QSS. He's, he's starting to get there. That was a really big twi fight for getting the Twitch online. You know, I think, yeah, I think Warwick's struggling a little bit this game compared to game one. You know, game one, he could kind of run in and just no one could stop him. He got kind of Malzahar ulted, and if it wasn't for the Zillion ult there, he would have died even sooner. I, I think they're, they're struggling to be able to just get on him as much. Well, the Ash slow is proving to be absolutely devastating because it turns off the Blood Hunt and slows him down on top of that. But they're looking to set up another play around this dragon. They know it's soul. They're going forward. Big ulti out of Alien Roll. Knocks up the Ash. Nikonia goes down. Prophet comes in and starts blasting away. Manages to get knocked down, but he has the Zillion ult on him. Shadow Claws is doing everything he can. Nikonia still down. The Zillion bomb picks up germ proof. Respected Bigfoot running away as fast as he can as the Prophet tries to chase down K-Rek, manages to find him, but the ulti off of Malzahar comes through. Oh, and a fantastic play by K-Rek to stay alive, get the ulti off, and then Zanyas, but he's going to fall down. The Scion's going to walk up, smack him, that drops him. But Respected Bigfoot goes forward, almost takes out the Zillion, and that's going to be another fight in favor of Sentinels as they go two for four around this soul point dragon again that both teams know is so important. Yeah, that's a lead for Sentinels now. I mean, they're just, they're not stopping. And credit to Alien Roll, that ultimate was massive. Ash just got instantly killed. Oh, the Ash Arrow goes just wide as they try to pick up Scattercat for overstaying a little bit. Nikonya running forward with the slows. Knockup coming out from 
Respected Bigfoot, Nico Nyan just firing away. They're trying to pick up Scattercat. Scattercat falls down, a little bit of overstay there. Alien Roll has to flash out. As Allison Res hits there to try to get the protection off, but he has to run away because he has no health. Lightning 13Z is showing up, but a little bit of an overstay from Sentinels turns it into a 4v5 around this Dragon Pit where all of the team of Anarchy Purple has been forced backed by dying. But they're here now. They have their gold spent. They're at full health. And we'll see if they try to make a play on this dragon wall. Ash is backing, I think, for IE. Yeah, Ash just picked up her Infinity Edge. Three full items. This next fight's going to be big. You're going to have to track this Ash if she can stay alive. Another big thing to point out, Twitch has the QSS finished, but it's delayed his third item to get it. And I think that that's a direct reflection of the threat that the Malzahar brings to this team. Yeah, Twitch with Infinity Edge versus Twitch without is a lot less scary, but you have to pay the Malzahar tax. There's no other option. You can't just get flash ulted. Oh, and they see them walk away, so Lightning 13Z runs onto this dragon. He says, we're going to take this right now, and the damage from the Prophet is enough that they're going to get this dragon for free. They're going to deny the soul point. Yeah. and give themselves another five minutes to be safe. The Prophet sneaks up to Nikonya, finds him looking, flashes forward, flash away. The poison pops, but the slow from Nikonya is enough to self-peel and save his life. The Warwick tries to run up, but k is there to deny the cheesy Warwick. And that's going to be a reset. But Flash is burned off of both ADCs, as well as the heal from Nikonya being down puts the ADCs in a position where this next fight is going to be a big deal, but Shadow Claws manages to trade top turret for that dragon and for that fight. Yeah, credit to both, um, or credit to whoever made the dragon call there. That was big to recognize they weren't in a position to stop you. Oh, Scion. Uh, another fight as the Scion walks forward, gets knocked up, gets chunked out. He's so, he's slowed down. Respected Bigfoot with a really good play to stay in front of him so he can't ultimate out, and that's going to be a really good catch by the bot lane and jungler of AP to get the tank out of this fight. That's gonna make Baron really difficult to contest if they decide they wanna walk over there. The front line, the disruption from Sentinels is now down. Yeah, I think Sion was feeling a little bit too comfortable. You know, he has his ultimate, so usually he can get out, but the Ash Arrow allowed Kane to get in front of the Sion, denying him his escape. And this is just going to be a little bit of sparring over vision here as Anarchy Purple debate whether or not they want to try to start this Baron. But they seem to make the call to play it safe and just try to farm it up. I think that they recognize that Soul Point is their objective win, but it doesn't come up for another three or four minutes after the last one went over to Sentinels for free. Yeah, I think this. ultimately I think the fight around Baron is going to be pretty big. And, you know, your Twitch is almost there. He's almost got that three-item spike. But even right now, he does do a good amount of damage. And I think kind of quietly, Alston Reztip, you know, he's 4, 1, and 12 on the Zillion. He's been landing pretty good, like, pretty great ultimates, just keeping his team alive. I really think this is going to be anybody's game. It's just going to come down to execution. I mean, and speaking of after one bad game, respected Bigfoot showing another monster performance. You can see why they banned this cane away from him in the past. Most gold in the game right now by over 1.5k. Yeah, and your only healing cut at this moment is um, Scattercat's Morella Nomicon. So unless the Lux is on the cane, he's healing a lot. Really nice thing about Morello, though, on those uh, control mages is... 1E hits the entire team and cuts the entire team's healing. But Sentinels with the positional oh. advantage here managed to take the turret, land a decent amount of chunk. The Prophet's flanking, but Nico Nya sniffs it out. Respected Bigfoot knocks out Lightning, but they're in a questionable position. The Prophet manages to get off a Rattata Tat and take down one, but Respected Bigfoot goes forward. Shield comes out. They're waiting out for Zillion ulti, but they don't quite wait it out. But they're going to pick up the Prophet anyways, as in the back side of the fight, Shadow Claws runs in and manages to pick up the Lux. This is going to be a big fight for AP as they continue running forward. Shadow Claws with an excellent flank to pick yeah. the Lux up off the back end, and only Scion and Zillion are up, while four members of Anarchy Purple manage to limp away from the Twitch damage, and that's just got to be the fact that he didn't have that infinity edge yet he just finished it yep and oh yeah, it was, that was it almost was, it was a great play. play great flank by wukong 
the Warwick ult barely missed, and I, I think sometimes as Twitch you can get a little too much into the idea of I gotta get this big flank. I think had he maybe just been behind his tanks, that might have went a little better. But you're right, if he had the Infinity Edge there, I think there would have been a few more people dead. Alien Rule walks up, tries to just mess with them, but they recognize he's not a threat. They finish up the Baron. They reset. This is the dragon coming up for soul. They're going to be able to contest this dragon soul with their Baron advantage. This next fight is going to be the one that turns the game, probably. Yeah, and crucially, Twitch has his Infinity Edge. I mean, this is the point where you can just see Twitch become a 1v5 monster, but if, if Anarchy Purple continues to just play how they have been, I, I think it's going to be hard to pilot a team fight so masterfully, masterfully as he would have to. Uh, I tend to agree with you, but they're death pushing the cane. Respected Bigfoot walks forward after having a phenomenal game. He's going to get caught by a death push as the Warwick ult tees to get away from germproof. And that might have just saved the game yeah. for Sentinels because that knocks off the jungler. And now they're going to be able to deny this soul. I don't think there's a way for Anarchy Purple to walk forward and try to take this dragon. And Anarchy Purple knows it. They're just That's running huge. down the mid lane. They're buffing That's up huge. the Baron, though. Yeah, and crucially, the shutdown went onto your Twitch, which is also big, and d the death push is always a strategy to, to use when you're kind of up against a wall, and, you know, respecting Bigfoot, just, he's feeling unkillable, but when you get focused like that, it, anyone can die. That's the Kane curse. You think you can heal and hide and dodge and dash, and all of a sudden they sneak up on you and catch you. The Prophet flanking, though, Alcin Reztip is the one who eats the Malzahar ult, but because of that, he doesn't have his ultimate. He dies in the Malzahar ult before the Zillion ult can come down. So Shadowclaw jumps forward, knocks them both up, and the Prophet gets caught also. That's a huge fight for AP, as they manage to pick up the bot lane, who is the carries on this team. There's no damage threat. Germfluke flashes forward, lands the snare on the alien roll, uses the ultimate, manages to knock up Scattercat in the back line. The Ashlows come through, they almost pick up the Scion. They're gonna knock down the turret. And Saya manages to get away as Scattercat continues to try to clear, but these barren up minions are just too tanky for Lux's damage, and there's a huge wave for Krek in the top lane pushing. Yeah, Krek had the intel intelligent play to immediately teleport top lane, so you're hitting from two lanes. And AP with the by the book play, they know they've got the barren up minions. They're gonna walk up, they're gonna take a second inhibitor. They get both inhibitor turrets, both inhibitors off of a little bit of a dangerous play, but a great call by k -Rec to ult the Zillion instead yeah. of Twitch. We talked about this early on. We wondered if that was gonna be what he had to do because as much as the Twitch's damage is and you wanted to turn that off, turning the Zillion off and preventing anybody from coming back to life is almost worth more than turning off the carry. Yeah, certainly. I mean, because once you've used that Malzahar ultimate, you don't have it again. And if if they just get Zillion ulted, they're back up. But kill Zillion, there's no ult coming through. And I think, again, I think the Twitch is, he feels really strong, which he is. And he's just getting, I think he he wants to get that big play that, you know, he, he's probably capable of. But I think he's getting a little too desperate to get the big flank when he should just try to stay behind the Scion. Because Alien Roll is just massive right now. And it's looking like Sentinel's making that same mistake again. They're positioning around this fight in the bot lane, but their tank, their front line is up in the top lane. He's pushing waves. And so if they get engaged on here, they're not gonna have what they need, but Twitch walks back. He knows he has to clear the wave. They got supers pushing. They're backing up. Nothing gonna happen here, but that was a scary moment for Sentinels for me. If, if uh, AP jumps over the wall and engages on them, they have nothing to do. Yeah, I think their best fights have all been behind a Scion ult just charging in, getting a good knockup onto a carry, and I think that's what you got to go for right here, and it looks like that may happen. Scion is posturing around. But he sees respected Bigfoot coming across that ward, gets behind the oh, team, no. and yeah, Shadowclaw's ult is out, but Warwick jumps forward, gets the stun down onto k -Rex, and he goes golden just in time. As respected Bigfoot knocks down Lightning 13Z, but Scattercat's laser comes through, knocks down k -Rex. Germproof falls to the Prophet. Respected Bigfoot runs forward, but he also falls to the Prophet. But Nikonya flashes forward, picking up kills on the both Scattercat and the Prophet. Shadowclaw somehow survives after disrupting the entire back lane and makes oh, the TP in. the top lane. That might be game. That was a big teleport or big flash in by Ash. She killed Twitch right as the Zillion Old expired. And Alcin Recep's the only one up. This Zillion's gonna have to try to hold the base, but against an Ash with full health, double buffs, and a Wukong, this might be it.
GGAP, GG Sentinels, wow. and Anarchy Purple crowned as the champions of the Demacian League after a barn burner of a series. Yeah, what a great series. I think both teams can be proud of that. I mean, really, game three especially, that was, that was a very close game, back and forth. I just think the slight things could have turned it either way, and you got it credit. I mean, you see why that Ash pick was so feared. All credit to Nico Nya. He piloted that champion just perfectly. Like, the, the Kane pick was massive. Credit to the Wukong. He kind of fell down early, but he got some big flanks. Malzahar was never afraid to flash in for the big ult. The Zyra ults were massive. But, I mean, credit to Sentinels as well. The Scion was huge. You saw Lightning's prowess on the Warwick again. Scattercat, to me, is kind of my ace this game. I mean, he had a great game on the Lux, was really keeping his team in it. You know, Prophet had some really nice team fights. I think the damage just came online a little late. And Alston Res tip on the Zillion just just kept kept his team going, kept him alive. Uh, I'm going to have to agree with you. Despite, I think uh, Warwick just edges him out in favor of deaths. But despite having almost the most deaths on the team, Scattercat really putting in some massive work on that Lux, falling back, making sure that their team stays alive, trying to keep everybody in it as long as possible. And if you watch the beginning half of the game, I'd have to say Respected Bigfoot was my MVP. But if you watch the entire game, Nico Nya on that Ash. Yeah, I just credit to him. I'm sure he was kind of feeling like, whoa, they left my champion finally up. I, I, I've been there before and I, he proved why maybe you should have kept banning it. I mean, this great game by him on the Ash. I, I definitely know what you mean. I've, I've had that moment. You see the first three bands go by and your champions not banned out for once and your eyes get really big and you have this quick thought of did they prepare something against it yeah, no if they did they would have they wouldn't have banned it twice in a row oh my god this is going to happen and i think that that went through nico Jao's mind and that definitely came through in the game looking so comfortable on the ash mm. getting out of all sorts of situations that just about any other adc probably falls in yeah, his actual for big too. I mean, that that extra form of engage, I think, really helped out his team and just. I think it kind of just, it shows why sometimes these three game series are so fun. In the regular season, there's not as much adaptation, but when it goes to a game three, you're you're adapting, you're changing the bands. I'm sure they didn't want to let the ash go through, obviously, but you have to ban something else. I mean, it's just that's the great thing about like these series. There's always adaption and. It seems like game three is always pretty exciting. I, I agree with you. I feel like Sentinels on the blue side, they said, look, we have to ban the Soraka after last game. We can't deal with that again. And they clearly did not want to see Orn on Anarchy Purple. And I think that's because of some of the past games that they've had where um, Shadow Claws is Orn is demolishes everything. And so all of a sudden they were in a situation where they had to let the Zyra and the Ash go through. And so they gave the bot lane their favorite champions. And boy, did that come through in a big way. Yep. Credit to both teams. It's a great series. Congratulations to Anarchy. I'm excited to see it. I hope, I hope both these teams stick around or, and see them next season. I, I definitely agree. It was a fantastic series. Uh, I know Sentinels broke up, but I hope that they all land on other teams. Anarchy Purple, uh, I hope you move up a division. Uh, I was amazed to see that you're all silver players and looking way cleaner than that. The team play was amazing. Uh, hopefully we see you guys bumped up a division next year and you can try to run it back in a higher division. Yeah. All right, everybody stick around. We've got one more coming through. We got Kamikaze Penguins versus Mundo Licious coming up in a couple of minutes. Uh, I am Cage the Cage Reaper here with Brewer and we will be back. <laughs> 